movie podcast ever recorded. And today we're going back on patrol with Police Academy 2. Let's go. I was kind of hoping, Mel, that you would come in with the sleeveless shirt, you know, do the full Mahoney. (laughs) (laughs) Was that your Bobcat? Yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> it's early. Dude, I was literally last night sitting there trying, like, can I can I, I, I do a Bobcat Goldthwait? Uh, mm, yeah. I don't like Ferris wheels. I think it's like as good as I could do, and it's pretty crappy. you got to get a little higher. I know. He's like, I know. So what? It's a no Ferris way. wheel? No way I'm getting that high. <laughs> I can't do it either. I'm really I, good at impressions, apparently. Please don't do that again for the rest of the episode. I appreciate it. I think a vice grip and uh, a scrotum must be involved. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's why he doesn't definitely. do it anymore. Right. Where do you get a scrotum, though? Uh, no, no. His own. <laughs> oh, okay. His own. His own. His if, own. If you have to ask, you can't afford it. All right. <laughs> Thank you for being yeah, Mel Vandy in the house today. Hi. Shoe store is closed. Yeah. Everything good with you? Uh, sure. Awesome. You lace the shoes on the way in, though. <laughs> yeah, he was uh, just running in at the last minute, so he's still covered in sweat. But I'm yes, glad that you're traffic. here. Traffic, yeah. breathing heavy. His first thing in the door. I don't. I just don't know what's wrong with people. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> get off my lawn. <laughs> the doctor Ryan Maddell in the house as well. How are you, sir? Uh, I'm getting a little nervous because the last Police Academy episode, Mel came over and almost punched my face in when I was giving a bad rating. So oh, I just realized yeah. I sat next oh, to him. Yeah. Might have been a mistake. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Better the you than me. <laughs> we got the uh, the mayor, Ryan Mueller, also in session. How are you, sir? I'm, I'm doing well. My voice is uh, coming, coming back. back. Yeah. yeah. Those of you that uh, can listen to trailer action, you'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah it was pretty rough. And, and, and guys, I'm excited to say we have a couple of guests joining us for the first time ever. We've got Brian and Dave over at the kids table. Say hello, guys. Hello, How's it going, guys? <laughs> <laughs> we almost kissed there. That was crazy. That would have that would have been awesome. And we're actually filming the kids' table, so what a special moment to kick off your time on the show. That <laughs> right. Would right? He's I've acting got, like it's the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I've got saxophone music keyed up here. Anytime you want to hit it, just say hit it. Yeah, just. <laughs> Can I be so bold to Sometimes say that? Sometimes your eyes catch your eye, each other in this show. Things, you know, emotions running high. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, at least in in my family, there's always been a rule of no kissing at the kids' table. Oh, that's. I, um, I, I don't know. I mean, I just just well, throw that out there. That's fair. Well, we did find some new info on you today. <laughs> if you. If you <laughs> Weaponize a story I told you four <laughs> minutes ago. I'm gonna kill you. All right. All right. We'll sing "Sweet Carolina" later. Shut <laughs> your <laughs> mouth. That's uh, that's just a little joke he tells. <laughs> that's funny. And that's the episode, everyone. All Thanks right. for tuning um, in. <laughs> thank you guys for being back, and thank you, Brian and Dave, for joining us over here. And uh, what we're gonna do, like we always do, if you've never listened to the show, we're gonna go through the vitals. We're gonna tell you who wrote it, directed it, uh, all of the reasons it qualifies to be on bad movies rule and then we're going to go through the movie scene by scene before we finally give out some awards and determine ultimately is this a bad movie is it a bad movie that rules or sometimes it's a straight up good movie and i know if it's a police academy already we're mel thinks straight up good movie i'm just calling it right now here's what i'm going to tell you yeah Uh, of the options you gave i'm going to say yes okay (laughs) one of those three yes On, on paper it is one of those three perfect perfect well look uh the movie was directed by jerry paris anybody uh ever heard that name before no no did the movie no. is he did, french and no his last name is paris he's from wisconsin then if he was french it'd be jerry perry oh yeah. obviously obviously read it a might book. be like jerry perry or something like that yeah no he if the movie felt like a tv show it's because this guy directed 300 episodes of happy days Oh, and yeah. uh, like Sorry. 70 or 80 episodes of the Dick Van Dyke show. So okay. like well, Bob that explains Cat. a lot then. <laughs> that way Bobcat looked like a wish.com. Uh, what's his face? Uh, well, if you're going to come with that, you better know the name. I right? don't. Ozzy Osbourne? <laughs> <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne? He looked like uh, the dude from Happy Days. Uh, the main guy. The Fonz? The Fonz. No. He like no. A wish.com who went through a nuclear war. <laughs> Wow. What kind of crack are you smoking? How dare you? That's pretty bad. It's national dare, treasure like the Fonz. Come on. You know, he's from Milwaukee. Really? Like your Wisconsin yes. crack is, is taking a freak. No. no. Henry Winkler. Oh. I heard they are doing a bronze bobcat, though. Oh, oh. That, oh. that's next. That's after the. Yeah. It's going to be right next to Fonzie. Yeah. yeah. And it screams if you get close enough. Like, yeah. ah! <laughs> he 
<laughs> exactly like that. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, movie was written by Blairy. 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 That's not his name. Uh, Barry Blaustein. Barry oh. Blaustein. Who and and David Sheffield and they're a writing duo that wrote a ton of Eddie Murphy movies. So Nutty Professor, The Norbit, uh, uh, Coming to America, and Coming to America, and Boomerang. And so like his their whole filmography is Eddie Murphy movies and. Police Academy two and three. I was gonna say what happened. Yeah. I mean, they <laughs> well, I know what happened. They couldn't get Eddie Murphy. That's what happened. Some of those movies are even the Eddie Murphy ones are terrible. I know they are. Okay, have you seen Norbit? <laughs> yes, it, it's awful. It's ter- have you guys seen Norbit? I tried not to. <laughs> yeah, we, c- continue trying. Nor- Norbit yeah. shows up on all those uh, uh, lists that I see. Yeah. of wh- horrible movies to never watch or watch at least once. It depends on what you want to do that day. I yeah. guess like Tubi. Yeah. yeah it's, oh yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah it pops right up on Tubi. Uh, movie starred Steve. I mean, the usual suspects as far as Police Academy goes: Steve Gutenberg, Bubba Smith, David Graff, Michael Winslow, and the uh, the addition of Bobcat Goldthwait along with Tim. Kaz- How do you say his Kazarinsky. name? Kazarinsky. Kazarinsky. Thank you. Uh, movie had a budget of seven and a half million dollars, so they got two and a half more to make the movie than they got for the first one, which was about a five million dollar budget. You know how much this stinking movie made? You're gonna. Sh- you're gonna. You're going to poop yourself. We're, uh, <laughs> we're going to be surprised. $115 million. Holy whoa. crap. In the 80s. That's an insane That's like amount half of a money. Million, half a billion dollars yeah. today. So if you're wondering how, you know, why'd they make seven of these? Well, I know oh. the first one did bank, and then apparently the second one made that so much money. They're just printing money on these things. It's the whole of America showed up to go watch Police Academy 2. Did you you were as a kid? Did you come across these movies, or were you older when you finally saw them? Yes, that's super helpful. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. <laughs> I think we okay. saw it in the, at the uh, the drive-in. So you're part of the problem then. Uh, well, yeah. I, but I didn't pay. Oh, so I was, I was not a five year old with a job. Okay, if all the five year olds that maybe could have had a job, I would say you. I didn't have a job till I was seven. All right, fair enough. And then he got into shoes at nine. That's right. Uh, movie currently sits on IMDb at a 5.8, uh, which is right at the Air America line of demarcation. Oh, my God. Uh, so it's number 72, kind of middle of the road for the movies that we've talked about. 5.8. When's the last 5.8 we've done? It's for, been a while since I've heard you mention Air America. No, it has been a it's while. Been, uh, yeah. We've been in Chuck Norris territory, and that's firmly in the 5.4s and unders for Chuck and and the like. Uh, movie right now sits at a 32% on Rotten Tomatoes. So the critics, two thirds of them, were like, "Nope, this sucks," and the audience is kind of right behind them there at forty-two percent. So that's not great scores, which is how it qualifies for this show. Police Academy Two. It's not getting it done. Not that's the it. show. But apparently, <laughs> but apparently, it took it took everybody going to see it. I, I, I mean, I'm just still amazed at how much money but that dude. That is a huge it makes me want to go money. look at three, four, five, six, just like financially. Just to see when did the wheel start to fall off for Police Academy? Right. If you five, how, and how long after did they continue making Police Academy movies? Going, no, no, we're gonna the next one's gonna, next gonna, one's gonna get do it, it done. We were just time. hit a little slump. That's right. We're gonna it's just a slump. Police Academy goes to the circus. It's gonna be huge. <laughs> okay, it's gonna be huge because I, I can't imagine as late as six and seven that they no, was, they it was five. Money. Okay, five is five is the falling off point. Interesting. Okay, got I, it. I, I just have to say, if you have all of America coming to see your movie and a third of the people like it, yeah. I'd say you're winning at that point. I mean, <laughs> you think that's a good ratio, dude, a third of the people are just <laughs> almost everybody hated it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't you, you don't... dare. All those people paid for it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's exact. That's more what it is. Right, everybody fine. paid for I'm it. I'm just saying. No, it's fine. keep making them. I respect it. They'll hate it. Well, you know what? We keep making this stuff even though people hate us. So I guess we're not that much different than Police Academy. So thank you guys for listening. Uh, If you want to connect with the show, the two best ways to do that is to email the show at thisshowistrash at gmail.com. We'll answer your emails on a mailbag segment. Or you can call and leave a voicemail, and we'll do the same with that. And that's 262-757-8567 to hit us up. Uh, If you really want to connect with us, though, the best way to do that is to join the Discord community. That's where you can get on there and you can chat with a lot 
lot of listeners, but also a lot of us at this, actually all of us at this table yep. are very active on the Discord. And so the only way to do that is to access it through our Patreon, which is patreon.com slash bad movies rule. It's really the best way to, to get a chance to talk and chat with us and, and pick our brains and uh, just have some fun. We get up to some stupid stuff on the Discord. There's yeah, a lot of stupid stuff. There's there. a bunch of the Discordians, uh, if that's the right word. That's the right word. Sure. Okay. They um, have watch parties like almost every night yep. of movies we're talking about or movies that they want to talk about or just whatever. And so like you can hop in. Usually it's 8 p.m. Central and yep. there's something going. There's something Someone's going streaming something. It's awesome. So if you want to ignore your wife and kids yeah. in the Discord, we'll we, join a watch party. That's right. Helping uh, dis- disintegrate marriages one per one couple at a time. That's right. That's We're a nega cool. Nintendo. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, it's time to pay the bills. All right, you guys ready to dive in? Oh, yeah. Let's my wallet's a little lighter. Yeah, here we go, boys. It's uh, it's it's an interesting start, let's just say that, to Police Academy 2. We have Tim Kaz- Kazarinski. Uh, thank Kaz- you. Kaz- uh, not going to work Tim here anymore. Gonna- <laughs> 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 Mr. Sweet Chuck. <laughs> Mr. Sweet Chuck uh, locking up. A lot of damn burglaries at the lamp store, I guess. <laughs> I guess. That's a hell of a security system. <laughs> bear traps. Locking up might be the understatement. <laughs> <laughs> you get a lot of bears trying to break in <laughs> to the lamp store. That's what I was like. Well, All right, you, man. you know, Yogi needs to have a little light on his picnic basket. <laughs> Dude. And he'd first have to get past the super realistic looking dog. Yes. That's there. Yeah. And of um, course, uh, light up hairy, red eyes. the cardboard cutout of Clint Eastwood, <laughs> which I, honestly, some of the burglars and gang members in this, I think, could get their ass kicked by cardboard cutout. <laughs> they, yeah, Eastwood. they definitely could. Okay. That's a distinct possibility. And you uh, know what's funny, though, is uh, I actually think that this is one of the funnier parts of the movie. Yeah. You know, in terms of jokes and stuff. Yeah. It starts off great. It's like Looney Tunes. Yeah. Right. Oh, with you know? the electrified, oh, yeah. you know, bar. Yeah. Wire yeah, that wire, yeah. I wish that most of the jokes in this movie would carry out as far as this one took it. Yeah, it's almost turned into airplane at that point, yeah. right? Like it was at least that's what it, it looked like it was heading because one wasn't a full blown parody, and it like okay, they're just going to steer into that for the second one, but then they're just like almost immediately like, just kidding, this is going to be <laughs> stupid. So yeah, Lauren was watching with me, and she. Immediately when we saw the lighting and stuff, she's like, I guess they didn't have Menards back then. Like, I just, <laughs> I was like, yeah, like, who owns a chandelier store? Like, yeah, dude, it, it's, and then when he gets robbed right after, it's like he had eight bucks on him, right? Yeah. You know, business has been slow. Kind of slow. Uh, yeah, nobody wants grandma chandeliers. I mean, come on. Well, Whoa. he's spending all the money on a security system. That's why he's Fair. broke, right? That's all he's got left. Honestly, dude, it, 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 what kind of bear is going to get past the like? You don't need everything past the electrified barbed wire. The real robbery is his ADT bill. <laughs> <laughs> right. Honestly, uh, this the cops in this neighborhood are so terrible that people literally wait outside the police station to throw eggs at them. Yes. That's how they spend their day. And before that, they're throwing rocks at the light to break the right odors. Edge yeah. of the light. An old lady did that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing today? Oh, I thought I'd just hang around the police station and chuck done, some eggs at some done cops. With, done with bingo. Um, oh, let me just throw a rock at the precinct light here and break it. And she was all happy about it. She's like, yeah, now it fits. Tired of these assholes, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> that dude got pelted he with did. eggs. He Just, was sopping with They eggs. were waiting for him. Like they were, he went in, they threw him on the griddle and made an omelet out of him. <laughs> he had so many eggs on him. Ridiculous. Dude. Lauren missed the eggs somehow. And when he's yelling at them, she's like, what is on his <laughs> coat? I was like, it's egg. Like, he just got egged. <laughs> he's so wet. sweaty. He's sweating through his uniform. <laughs> Why is he so sweaty? <laughs> Guess we know who Will Patton who has, awards who has hasn't <laughs> gotten the egg sweats before. <laughs> Honestly, dude. the egg sweats. It's way worse than the meat sweat. <laughs> He's like, I can't believe I got to be in the sequel. I'm going to oh, kill man. my agent. <laughs> right. I signed up for three more of these. It's his one scene that he was in. Yeah, dude, it's bad. So the chief, he goes in. That's the chief going in to see the captain, played by um, uh, Howard. He- oh, Howard Hessman. Howard Hessman, thank you. Uh, Howard Hessman plays Lassard's little brother. Lassard being the head of the, the you know, not Leslie Nielsen. Commandant. Commandant. Yeah, fake Lassard. Leslie Nielsen. Fake Leslie Nielsen. Yeah. Uh, who, those of you who didn't listen to the first one or know, was supposed to play 
that that part, but ended up being the being this guy. Anyway, long story short, uh, Baby Lassard is given thirty days by the chief to clean up the town or the precinct because it's out of control and things are going crazy. And Mauser is, you know, uh, Officer Mauser is the second command the, the what's the the watch chief, chief, watch, chief, watch chief, commander, watch commander yeah. or whatever and he wants to step into that so he's going to take his 30 days because in every police academy movie there's always two other cops trying to sabotage what the other cops are doing so these are the two cops that are going to do that and that's essentially the plot of the movie they've got 30 days but damn it i need to get my hands on some young men before yes. i can do that <laughs> get them get them young men i'm Bro. sure there's a bar or something you can go to <laughs> I know, I'm not going to say this every time we talk about Police Academy. In fact, I'll, I'll promise I'll never say this again. But imagine if like that was Leslie Nielsen. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like how much better if he was like, I need to get my hand on some young men and how much better he would have been like. Oh, he would have ad-libbed well, that Well, you know, thing. you have to give me a couple days on that, but I'll, <laughs> and I'll try and find something. He just would have, it just would have been so yeah. much better. You know what, though? He, he he still did a fine, fine job. He didn't. He's very overrated. <laughs> I, everybody, everybody loves the guy that plays Lassard, but but... He's not that great. Yeah, at but the you're role. comparing him to Leslie Nielsen, and that's not yeah. fair. But he, but he, Leslie he's, Nielsen was supposed to have the role. I literally, know, but discount Leslie Nielsen. The it recasting works. that would need to happen to make this movie good, yeah, is impossible. Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. <laughs> they, what, there is no budget that could make this good. That's, all right, that's that's fair. I don't is know. It, if, though? Yeah. I, we'll probably that's improve it later. I think. All right, we can improve that. Uh, Mel's favorite character, Tackleberry, is our first from the old squad that we see appear in the film. And Tackleberry is directing traffic. Yeah, he's playing he's crossing, crossing guard, guard. Crossing guard yeah. at a school. Yeah. Yeah. This is the first thing out of about 47 that doesn't make any damn sense about this movie. It's supposed to be their first assignment, but then but they're we see already them on, all assignment. on assignments when yeah. we yeah. see them, <laughs> right? Because they've graduated from the academy. That was the end of the first one. And then this next phase of the movie is here's what they're all up to right and so tackleberry is a crossing guard at a school and the kid from wonder years yeah the brother wayne the, from Wonder yeah, Years. thank yeah. you and and from back to the future yeah right the yep. one with the coon skin hat yep. what's a rerun uh is in the car and doesn't want to get out and go to school and so mom comes over to tackleberry just as luck would have it the worst person yeah. you could ask to do something like this well i'll say this this was the 80s yeah <clears throat> No mom's going to Tackleberry to get their kid to school. That kid's getting a backhand across the face and punted out of the car. Right. If this okay. was accurate to the 80s, it would be like, oh, you're not going to school. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You might be picking up some chiclets as a kid off the sidewalk if you talk to your mom like that in the 80s. Oh, you grew up in our family. <laughs> That's pretty close. Uh, you know, my sister who's over here, and I wasn't going to call you out, but since we're not talking about that, um, Rach... What would have happened if we just sat there and said, yeah, I'm not going? Um, pretty sure we would have left with, you know, some disheveled clothing, some red asses. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. I'll boost it up in there. Yes. Oh. It was absolutely. They wouldn't have been going to get a police officer. And, and calling my mom a name. I might have ended up getting a bar of soap oh, before she, she punted me out of the car. Face. Yeah. I Come on. about that. Oh, he's dead. Yeah. I guess I'm an 80s kid now. I thought he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she was calling the officer to pre-report a murder. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Just wanted to let you know. There's going to be a murder in this car. <laughs> In, what are the rules for justifiable homicide? In Tackleberry, talking back in the eighties. <laughs> in his defense, Tackleberry yes. did handle the situation. He was a fact. He handled it. Technically, yes, he handled the situation. <laughs> he did. But what the hell is that? Was it a forty-five that shoots shoots smoke bullets, or yeah. what the hell was that? He had a forty-five that or fifty-four. Uh, what, okay, yeah, but it they, wasn't. They're a, just carrying dry ice in the back seat. <laughs> that's, that's what it was. It was a regular gun. He just shot yeah. her. Heart transplant that she was <laughs> she was transporting. Well, that's why the kid was talking back. There was clearly a kilo of coke in the back of that car that Tackleberry blew apart. Because <laughs> honestly, because otherwise, I'm like, that's was, not a flare gun. No. So what the hell is happening? Was it supposed to be a flare gun? Do you think, I, or like a tear gas gun or something? That so it wasn't supposed was to be tear gas. Something that's not a, a to be, live yeah. round that he was uh, firing. Yeah. And then she what? says, thank you, like he didn't just destroy. <laughs> right. Those uh, are the child rounds. <laughs> the child <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say it was a 454 bear round because no matter what, we're wrong. 
Yeah. So we just got to like fully send it. It's oh, completely yeah, that's wrong. Fine. Oh, we always Plant get your flag. fact checked yep. on gun stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, during um, Invasion USA, Clint made the joke about how when they blew that door apart, how like, oh, we're out of uh, C4, uh, Simtex. Yeah, same amount, right? And then somebody was like, well, actually, the blast equivalent on Simtex is a 1.25 and C4 is a 1.34. So that joke doesn't make any sense. And I just wanted to reach through the computer and choke the life out of this person. Okay, when you play Counter Strike. Great. <laughs> One point three four. Continuing, of course. And you, and you know they had their calculator out doing that too. Yeah. Okay, the actual calculation. Yeah. And then that means the door would have only gone X amount of My feet. Favorite. Wikipedia says. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, Officer Motormouth Jones is back. Of course, he's the only one I think out of the main officers that appeared in every single Ugh. police academy. Yeah. And he's there in a diner, and you got this yuppie couple that you know walks up. Well, I don't even watch television. I can tell. I don't even own a television. <laughs> We're gonna do it through the sheet later, like <laughs> with our clothes on. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just with our clothes on. My sweater's right? still draped over my shoulders. Honestly. Make sure the street light's out. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't in Utah. I'm just... <laughs> that's the couple. And then, the, I look, I like motor mouth. See, I... I, Again, the, every time I rip on any of these guys because there's such a heavy nostalgia for police academy yeah. that anytime I say anything negative or anybody, not just me, about any of these guys, people get defensive, and I totally get it. Michael Love, Winslow is a talented hero. I, he's great. Here's the thing: <laughs> every bit that he does in this movie requires me to think. No one understands the direction which sound comes from. Right? Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. He was my favorite as a kid. Oh, yeah, I love him. When I watched the movies as a kid, he is my favorite for sure. Right. Yeah. Because of the zany noises and everything. Yeah. But then as an adult, you go, how did they not just realize He's the guy right next, next to him? him. Right. Or, or in this direction, <laughs> not from my mouth, is very clearly. Wasn't even the person who's making the noises. Yes. Right. Two in the food. Like, how did I do how that? Do, is that me? <laughs> Am I doing that? <laughs> I'm breaking up with you. Right? It, it's just, it's, yeah, it's I'd, weird. Well, I also don't get. I feel like they did the same thing as in a police academy where every bit he's in is just a bit for him to do the noise. They yeah. didn't yeah. work it into like, there's a, like one scene where it right. works for their benefit, but other, right. everything else is just like him like, oh, I'll do. They're, they're just shoehorning it in to have, to uh, attempt to have that. some comedic effect I'll anyway. I'll do the thing that I do now. Yeah. He, he well, actually, Michael Winslow is still doing that thing. Sure. That's, yeah. He's, he hasn't stopped yet. No, yeah. and like, you know what? I saw a kick-ass Michael Winslow video recently where he redubbed Star Wars. Did any of you guys see that clip that's out there? He mm -hmm. took the whole no. scene where, where Luke, and, uh, Luke and Han go to the different uh, gunner positions in the Falcon, and he muted the movie and did everything including the voices and wow. the, his tie fighter noise is crazy and so super talented and did you see him do the led zeppelin song no. with the guitar person no guitar i have not person. seen that you know those guitar people <laughs> yeah, the guitar people <laughs> one of those, those people did he do the right bass person they're right there too? by the swamp yeah. people <laughs> he had a bass person and a drum person <laughs> <laughs> and they had all a sorts of persons. Oh. <laughs> My favorite are the singy ones. <laughs> the singy I like people? the backup dancer persons. <laughs> the best. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Michael Winslow should be a singy person. I think, <laughs> but he does a Led Zeppelin yeah. cover with an actual guitar player. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, wow. no, I have no doubt. So no slight against Cash him. No, him. he's very no. talented. Because it's, he's awesome. They just try I to love him. Just, him in. Just, yeah. Yeah. I think Michael Winslow is actually out on the sidewalk, out in front of the forge. Where, where the hell are we? Okay, all right. So on the beach. Yes, now we get to where Mahoney is. And he's on the beach. He's sleeveless. Police uniform on a three wheeler, just cut off, living it up. Cut just, off uniform, shorts, talking to chicks, you know, like cops do yeah. when they're supposed to be doing other things. And uh, I just looked right at her. She used to be a police officer for a long time. How long? Thirteen. Thirteen years on the beach, that's riding right. a trike. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I thought. That's perfect, what I thought. Perfect. Yeah. How true to life is this movie then? Oh, it's uh, spot on. Oh, spot on. <laughs> she actually gets PTSD from watching it. Yeah. Um, so it makes her they, think about going back to Beach Patrol. They show it at the Academy. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like at school when the subs come in, they just put a movie on, right? Yeah. That's like, that's what they do there. They're like, all right, just watch Police Academy 1 through 7 and you're good to go. 
Yeah, here's right. your degree. That's Go right. fight crime. It's the online course. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The University of Phoenix <laughs> Police School. <laughs> All right. On the beach, it's Thursday, uh, so it's time for Timmy and the two Chads to try and run people over on the beach. Oh. As you uh, do. As you do. Oh, they were Chads? These dudes. I thought they were Chodes. <laughs> potato potato okay uh but less hair <laughs> they're straight ripping this truck i mean people are barely getting out yeah, of the way are. and there's dudes just laying on the beach sunbathing it's the 80s <laughs> I, you know i'm glad i watched this a second time around because i miss that the first time around because i was like bushing the boobs yeah no because my wife i'm sitting there watching it and you know i said why they have the two girls get up what's it's going the 80s. on Right, and then quickly go. Oh no, cover my boobs. <laughs> That's right, exactly. Enough to go like boobs. But, yeah. <laughs> but but then you looked at the year the movie was made, and you're like, oh, it's the '80s. All right. That's right. Why well, do you think it made my, so much? That's what my wife said. She goes, well, do you want the real answer, or you know, it's 1980s? I was like, she's like, but otherwise, tan lines. Yeah. I was like, oh, you actually justified boobs in an '80s movie. That's well, amazing. Okay. Do you want to know what Lauren had to say about this scene? Oh, oh I know yes, exactly what know she had she to say. What did Lauren have? What do you think she, she said? She critiqued their their. Assets. Physique. Yes. <laughs> she, she was like, get some bigger boobs if you're going to do this. <laughs> His wife's favorite thing to do is to be very critical about yep. size, shape, weight, circumference. Yes. She's a nice lady. <laughs> <laughs> that just made her sound horrible. <laughs> no. No, she she's, just she's a boob critic. Taste. Okay, She's a boob critic. Yeah. Well, that sounds like another show. Bad, right. boobies bad, rule. Boobies rule. bad boobies rule. Bad boobies rule. Bad boobies rule. There we go. Coming to Spotify next year. <laughs> BBR. Uh, <laughs> in a world. <laughs> we could have PBR on BBR. <laughs> if Lauren handpicked people for movies, we'd all be better off. Let's just say that. I tell just you what, saying. I would listen to that show. <laughs> I think I think we we people would. I would watch them get handpicked. Oh, good <laughs> for you. <laughs> the the, the thing like is. <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't get a question as to why I would listen to the show yeah, rather than watch know. it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, all right, just look at this right here. Honestly, <laughs> it's the same reason people read Playboy for the articles. Right? <laughs> He's one of those guys. He's one of those guys. I'm a guys. man of culture, thank you. <laughs> don't find that pile of socks in the court. <laughs> it's laundry day. Right, it's laundry day. <clears throat> and you know what? Why is the kids' table talking? That's well, what I want to know. What are you talking about? That's why we have these guys here. Oh. Oh, look at him getting testy over there. You guys are good. Don't listen to Mel. <laughs> he had a long day at the shoe store. Uh, long night. Anyway, a sleeveless Mahoney gives chase because Tim just... Great acting on Tim Park. Ah, hey, I'm Tim. <laughs> yeah, it's time. To hey, could you stop doing it? No, not gonna stop. Let's go. That was His nice real. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh no, you're good. Oh, his real name is Tim. I think he was that dumb <laughs> uh -huh. that they were like, "You're George," and he's like, "I'm Tim." And they're like, "Okay, we'll just go with Tim. Just, yeah, just, just, just drive." Just the guy in a oh. job interview is like, "Hi, I'm Tim." <laughs> Book him. I'm here for the shoe sales job. So what you're saying is he was an actor that was good at getting one part, and he got the part. He, so, he did what he know, had to do, I guess. He did what he had to do. Yep. He Kinda. drives the, the truck down the beach, and unlucky enough for Tim, there's another ocean running perpendicular to this <laughs> yeah, ocean. How do, where did that break wall, breakwater <laughs> wall come from? No. They're driving on flat sand. And every beach I've been to along the ocean, there's not like the marina right here. Another ocean. A hundred feet off of the yeah. beach. That's that's unfortunate for him. Yeah. Uh, so into the drink, Todd, he Again, goes. Again, they ruin another perfectly good square body truck right. in a movie. You get mad every time. I do. I hate when I see them trucks destroyed. One less. One less. One less. Pour a little well, out for that. See, back Chevy. in the day, they didn't have Google Maps. They had to actually print it out. Yeah. They, so, had, we, well, they, they had the foldable You think they are printing out MapQuest in 1985 or whenever this movie came out? Yeah. Bro, I'm trying to confuse the millennial here. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to confuse guys. Them. Guys, I know they had iPhones. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. iPhones uh, came out in 1979, right? <laughs> yeah. All the new recruits come in at this point. They've got them all there. Even the ones we didn't see. Hooks is there. Uh, Hightower is there. Fackler is there. And basically, they're given the charge of you got to find the scum, right? That's what he says to him. Find the scum, and. As always, like I said, these other two what was it? a Proctor was the other cop Proctor, along with yeah. Bowser that was trying to sabotage what they were doing, and so they're all given their different assignments and their different partners. And uh, you know, uh, Mahoney has to go and get fitted for a new uniform, obviously, obviously. because yep. he's just literally wearing he's got cut off pants, cut off sleeves, and he goes in and and the seamstress Chloe 
was supposed to be his love interest in the movie. Okay. And she ends up being in two scenes. She's randomly a bridesmaid at the end yep. of the wedding at the end. And she's kind of in this scene here uh, where he tries to impress her with a uh, Balloon, animal, he balloon, had a balloon animal, dong down his shorts, running down the leg of his shorts. All right, and he it's like getting his inseam measured, and it's just right there. <laughs> he, he traded that thing. He got that thing <laughs> by giving a little girl a chocolate bar that was in his yeah, uniform, a melted <laughs> Snickers. He was sitting in the sun baking all day. When you say it like that, Brian, <laughs> yeah. So he said, "Let me have that, so I can pretend to get yeah. to my dick." Yeah. Hey, little girl, you pretend want to my be Dutch chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> If only you have a balloon. Yeah, that's right. Don't ask how I'm going to use it. How? What's the move here? Like she's gonna. She's gonna like, see his. Wow, dog. you have a big wing. And then what happens when she finds out it's not what you said it was? At that point, it's too late. She's pot committed. You sure yeah. about that? <laughs> Pretty sure she's just gonna be like, well. Here's the thing. I better head out. She had to be real sure that was a balloon, otherwise she'd stab him straight in the dick. <laughs> right? Yep. I mean, maybe that's what she's into. You better be real sure. I mean, she figured <laughs> out he wasn't Dutch just by the look of him. I. I what? <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, Mahoney gets put with Vinny. Now, Vinny was supposed to be what's the 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 chunky guy from the first one. Um, with the cat, uh, had the or had the dog or whatever. Do you remember that guy? Oh, uh, uh, Leslie. Leslie. Yeah. So Leslie was supposed to come back and be his partner in this one, but when he read the script and saw that he had to eat cat shit or that his character was going to be forced to eat a cat turd, he said, "Yeah, this is." And it's all fat jokes and stuff. He's like, "I'm not doing this." And so then, for him. random Vinny guys ends up being put in, and that's why he's just randomly not in the movie for part two. Because uh, yeah, the first introduction to Vinny is absolutely disgusting. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that was the dude from Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, it kind of looked like him at first. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the ketchup and mustard guy. That guy. Yeah. Guys, yeah. guys, guys, guys. My pills. <laughs> that guy. Yeah. No, but this this dude literally was eating a bowl of Lucky Charms. That his cat took a shit in. And those lucky charms have been out for who knows how many days. Right. Sitting in milk. It, it's like you're having cheese and lucky charms at that point it takes with a side a, of cat shit. It, it takes a lot to gross me out. I mean, I like, you know, Kingpin and Dumb and Dumber yeah. and the Farley right. Brothers yeah. and all that stuff. And then that, I literally was like, you it know, was gross. It was disgusting. He flicked it away. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. dug back in, man. <laughs> Sure, you don't want some? <laughs> you don't like cereal? I'm on a diet. <laughs> For real life people, this is the next scene. I'm moving on from cat shit. That's um, yeah, let's I thought the real world was starting. <laughs> For real life people and not caricatures, toss a football around an alleyway. <laughs> In the smallest football field they could find. It reminded me of the room. The room, yes. Yeah, right, where they're like, but no uh, tuxedos. We toss in the football. Yeah. Yes, right. we're American. We have fun. <laughs> Oh, I'm open, man. I'm open. He's right here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> hand him the ball. Hand like, here. Did you just hand, hand me that hand football? Off. <laughs> Here's the thing I don't understand why the choice was made to not just have real people or portray real people. These are the two, they got their backwards ball caps on, and they're definitely two, you know, male adults that are just in there going we love the football and then two gang members are like what are you guys doing in the alley over here I'm like why can't they just act like regular people yeah sports ball do you know what I mean it doesn't make any sense tonally I'm like oh my gosh you, and of course Hightower comes by and does the high. it's a, all an excuse, yeah, it's an excuse to inter Hightower introduce thing. Hightower he like pins him to the garage door with a with a football but it's just, it takes me right out of it, right? Where well, he, he also just walks away after, like, those guys are just going to get up and kick these guys' ass anyway. <laughs> right. No, but he's, you know, he proved his point. Okay. <laughs> Street, <laughs> and justice. You, and Street justice. You <laughs> and you better. And you better. <laughs> you, I'll throw a football through you next. You know, you foot the ball and, and do it good. What do you want him to do? Put him in jail for stealing their football? For playing monkey in the middle with these guys? I don't know. Just anything but that. <laughs> Uh, Tack Elberry gets assigned to Kirkland, uh, played by Colleen Camp, the same year that Clue came out. Uh, she looks rough. Now? I, no, <laughs> it, like, versus Clue. Like, yeah. I don't know if it's lighting. I don't know if it's... It's the motorcycle. Uh, the motorcycle. I, I don't know what it is, but it doesn't look like the same person that plays... No. The, so Colleen Camp played the maid in Clue, and she was Kirkland in this movie, and it's the same year. 
and it looks like two different people. Yeah, what happened? Huh. So I don't know if it's makeup, lighting, camera, whatever. Costume. And costume. She's not French? Uh, definitely costume. She's not French. <laughs> no. Definitely not, costume. Not French. <laughs> they, they didn't have room for the French-made police officer in this uh, one, I guess. Kirkland's basically a female Tackleberry, uh, and they start foreplay at lunch. Talking about, hold on, I got to get my... Get the, yeah, cue it up. My foreplay music. There we go. <laughs> they're just trying to have some hot dogs at lunch, and they're like... My gun is big and smooth and powerful, and my shaft is huge. And Well, I like to long. use bullets that are good for penetration. That's right. She <laughs> says penetration and pronounces every syllable. Yes. It, and he's looking yeah. across the table at her. And his gun goes off. <laughs> no. I don't shoot blanks. <laughs> oh. It's thick. The air is thick, like with the two of them, yeah. immediately. I will say I yeah. do appreciate that it was at least a, like had some chemistry there to a certain degree. You think there was chemistry between bit. Tackleberry? That was I believe it. Thing and in Kirkland? common, I believe yeah. it. It was the one thing that brought them together. Right. They like fire big guns. Whoa. You like guns? Yeah. What's happening? Really? Is this about to happen? Yeah. Come here. <laughs> Can I polish your barrel? You. We have one thing in common. This is clearly <laughs> meant to be. <laughs> that's is what that, I'm saying. There's a love story that's that never that happened. Gun barrel? Or are you just happy to see <laughs> me? Yeah. Right. Seriously, um, they so the first really like crime or thing that happens is this armed robbery over at uh, Sweet Chuck's <laughs> Lamp Store. I swear these gang members are just hanging around, going, "Where? Who should we rob? The f- yeah. freaking lamp guy? What about the weird guy with the lamp? <laughs> the guy with the lamp? That, that lamp guy's got about twenty eight dollars and fifty cents worth of goods in his store. Let's go get oh, him. And we, we get- know the bears don't go in there." <laughs> <laughs> Zero chance that bears are going to yeah, beat us to the not, punch. Not going to find a bear okay. in there. We didn't we get eight bucks off that guy last time. <laughs> He's probably got seven. <laughs> <laughs> all they wanted was to steal their McDonald's breakfast money, and that's it. That's all they were trying to do. And so I they, thought it was cough drop money. <laughs> we're going to get some hauls. <laughs> Like, bro, you you don't sound good. You can sound a little hoarse. Let's go beat the crap out of the lamp guy and get you some lozenges mm-hmm. immediately. <laughs> Just hauls money. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Dude, it's ridiculous. Get the cherry ones. Mahoney and Vinny come in and end up in a shootout with Fackle. Or, uh, Fackler. 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 Fackler, who comes in the other way. And they end up shooting out with each other. The bad guys slip out the back almost immediately and the police are just shooting at each other from different sides of the lamp store and the lamps are getting wasted i don't think they're shooting each other tens tens of dollars in inventory yeah gone just destroyed just destroyed they're literally aiming at every single lamp yeah (laughs) well especially once tackleberry shows up tackleberry shows up and he and with him especially i mean his partner just kind of shoots lady tackleberry comes in like she's the gang from invasion usa just i don't see anything i'm just gonna spray bullets all over is she driving around on that motorcycle with an ak-47 she came in with it on her like strapped to herself okay she's a patrol officer yeah she comes in and just starts blind firing standard issue didn't you know and Tackleberry is aiming at like the ring bell for service and everything, like on the countertop <laughs> specifically, taking out all of that stuff. I'm just like, what is happening? This is not to me. I, I'm gonna sound like the biggest Debbie Downer, but it's not funny. No, not even it a wasn't little bit. Funny. Right? Am I crazy? I know no. you think it's funny, but I, you're Dutch or whatever. So you know, <laughs> gunplay is <laughs> gunplay is never funny. <sighs> It just wasn't. I think they were trying to make it comedic. Oh, yeah. look at us. We're destroying this store. Yeah. We're just, look how good Tackleberry can shoot. He's knocking lamps off. Yeah. It just wasn't. And it, like, even when it started with Fackler, it was supposed to be funny because he's the clumsy one or whatever, and they right. trip. But, I mean, it just wasn't. No, it wasn't great. But they get off scot-free. Do you think they should have gone further with it to just, like they did in the beginning, where he just kept locking up? Where if they kept going, to you either had to elevate or yeah. have a better bring a tank in, or have a better, more compelling reason. No, you bring a tank in. Yeah, it might get funny then. Well, that's the problem with the yeah. movie. A lot of times is right. that they don't take the joke far enough in some cases, right? Right, and then they take it too far in others, and it's garbage. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nailed it. Uh, so they all get reamed out by Mauser back at the station, but then Captain Lassard is convinced pretty easily by Mahoney, who's like, I guess we cared too much. Yeah. I guess we tried too hard. You know what? Great work, boys. You're absolutely right. (laughs) 
yeah, commendation yeah. for all of you. And they have a beard Let's later. Go have a beer, at, which is where Tackleberry pulls Mahoney aside yep. and be like, "Going to talk to you. We got to keep it ten ten thirty five, which isn't even the right freaking code. <laughs> it was by nineteen forty uh, standard. You know the nineteen forty police code. Uh, yeah. Doesn't Nerd. everyone <laughs> confidential information? <laughs> so I thought that was ten thirty six. No. What's ten thirty six? No. <laughs> It's right before. No, no one likes to grind things codes. to a halt more than you do. I know. Okay? <laughs> Just ten codes are, suck are, the energy are right gone. Out. <laughs> Got it. No more so, ten codes at all. No more ten codes. Oh, all plain yeah. voice. I didn't know that. Here's my question though about Steve Gutenberg in the previous scene: mm. is he gives this rah rah speech? Is anyone else buying it? Like, is any did yeah, anyone Lassard watch it? Bought it? Lassard bought it. Besides him, like he has the charisma of. A wet sock, like he's just. We're back to the pile of socks again. <laughs> yeah, not that kind. Of... <laughs> it was eggs. <laughs> it was eggs. That's he just sucks. I don't. I don't like. You him. really hate Goody. I think you like. You hated him in the last one too. Yeah. Yeah. What's your deal with Goody? I don't know. I would rather watch Boyfriend School. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Kurt Mummer, please unburn Bro. your copy of Bur- <laughs> Boyfriend School. I just felt betrayed. <laughs> yeah. Because I thought Steve Gutenberg was so cool when I was a kid. Yeah. yeah. And then watching this again, we talked about it when we were watching it. It was like, you're not cool. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just take your sleeves off. Now you're cool. That's not how you do it. And I didn't get in that same yeah. scene why he was walking around and grabbing everybody's shoulders. It was a little yeah. much. I don't. What, why you have he's, to do? That? He's just trying yeah, to say, and a little, see just here, a yeah. little far down past the okay point too. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's touching everyone's badges. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I respect What's the ten code for that. I respect no more ten codes. Plain <laughs> oh, voice yeah. only. Plain right. voice only. <laughs> okay. That I don't even know a, what that means, but I'm just repeating what it's from the forty. That used to it's be a ten sixty nine. The next scene is. Uh, oh, first of all, I should say Tackleberry, yeah, pulls, Tackleberry pulls him aside. Uh, Gutenberg aside at uh, the bar. He's like, "I'm in love, man. He met her today. He spelled it out today. How did he spell it out? The uh, wrong code. The, I, I, no, he spelled it out like with." Um, you know, like, you know, use words for the letters. Oh, right? I got you. I Link, got you. Lincoln Ocean, Victor. Yeah, yeah that was yeah, it. Yeah. Lincoln, yeah, there we go. Uh, he's like, dude, she's so hot. She likes guns. She, I like guns. She said the word penetration to me. She likes guns. And made, and made <laughs> I mentioned she likes guns. And made eye contact when she did it. Um, she knows I'm a human. <laughs> <laughs> we had hot dogs. <laughs> she touched my leg. Uh so basically, it's they're trying to shoehorn this romance in here yeah. with, with Kirkland and Mahoney, and he's of course there's that moment where he says he's a virgin, right. and the whole bar the was whole like bar quiet stops. at that exact the, moment. The jukebox stops, right? Everything <laughs> yeah. stops. Um, and the next scene is the gang, the gang, not the gang as in these police officers, but the the scallions or whatever these are scullions, scullions, scallions. I like scallions better. <laughs> the scallops go shopping. <laughs> okay. That's the whole this scene. Gang sounds delicious. <laughs> <laughs> they were this, they treat the shopping experience right. like a supermarket sweep too. Like they just came fresh <laughs> off the game show. They're just like, oh, I gotta get this up here. Make sure my cart's like, yeah, got the most what, stuff what? in it. It was it was Rufio and the boys. That's yeah. right. <laughs> it was dressed like Rufio from <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bangarang. <laughs> yeah, seriously, dude, uh, it was crazy. And even the workers aren't selling what's no. happening. No, they're right? like, oh, it's like a normal Tuesday. Oh, you forgot your stamps. Yeah. Hey, no. scallions are over there. Scallions, aisle one. I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. Was that, that was oh, I got good there. One. Did I get there? Yeah, you got, got there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hey. Yay. I don't. <laughs> I won't ever be able to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're gonna get the products you want if you just go across the shelf. No, you're gonna get there and you're gonna be so hungry and it's just 47 cans of Raid. Yeah. You know, and you're like, gosh, oh, dang it. <laughs> My favorite part was the manager. For you guys, this was a shopping experience. For me, it was a Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> right. Maybe that's why the workers aren't selling it. Yeah. This is just a daily yeah. occurrence for Is these. That just where happens. The Street Fighter movie got that line. Maybe <laughs> from this. Whoa. What did he? He didn't say that out loud, did he? I mean, you could see it in his face. In his face. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. But Raul Juliet took inspiration from. Yeah, him, yeah. for sure. Absolutely. Read his eyes. Just said, "Yeah, that's the line." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Mahoney gets put on tunnel duty by Mauser. And they've got to sit in this tunnel, and it, the scene itself serves no purpose, only yeah. to make them covered in dirt and crap, so that when they get back to the locker room, they want to prank Bowser. 
you know, that's literally it because we never go back to being in the tunnel again or anything like that. They're just covered in exhaust and crap from being sitting there in the tunnel. And they come back to the locker room and uh, the bad guy, I actually really liked the guy that played Bowser. I don't remember what his name was, um, the actor's name was, but he, I thought, was really giving yep. up the old college try here, right, with whatever he was given. It's a little on the nose to just be singing your evil plan in the shower. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> One day I will be captain and these losers will be gone. <laughs> I wonder what he's planning. <laughs> what is he trying to do? I haven't heard that song. <laughs> <laughs> I will sabotage Lassard's career. Dooby dooby doo. It's just like, <laughs> come on, man. Uh, he has Tackleberry's fixing his helmet with this like epoxy resin. And so Gutenberg gets the rundown really quickly about how long it lasts, how quick it dries, all of that, and goes in and sticks it in the shower to be used as shampoo by Mauser. Yeah, which... Well, I don't know. It was Gutenberg because it was a black hand that reached in there. I'm assuming it was like Jones was or something. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I watched that. it twice. I just and assumed I, it was... I'm like, I did see it. It was like a black hand that reached in there. They got Hightower to do that? It might have been Hightower or Jones. Oh, that's Wow. Awesome. Maybe he was just very tan from being <laughs> yeah. on the beach. I could, it could be. I, I did appreciate the work that Gutenberg had put in. I, and you know damn well, he had spent that whole summer at the gym, and he's like, can I not have sleeves in this movie? Is yeah. that <laughs> right? Can we do that? <laughs> like I got a, the Possible. gun show I'm here. up to 15s. Yeah. <laughs> he puts this stuff in his hair. And immediately it starts to dry and his basically his hands become stuck to his hair and his scalp. And bro freaks out so bad that he just walks he dong just out, walks out <laughs> straight into the locker room. Can't see a thing. Just butt ass naked. Who did this? And he ends up motor mouth Im imitates the dog that he doesn't like. Yeah. And gets him into the hallway where the neighborhood watch meeting and the old ladies from the neighborhood are out there, and dude doesn't seem to give a crap. No. Right? I, I love the little neighborhood watch uh, Nazi brassards. What? The little armbands. Oh, I didn't see the armbands. Yeah, no, I missed the armbands. Yikes. You know they're serious. Seriously wacky. There's what I was like, <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> They try. Okay, so I'm sorry. I just lost my place for a second there. They try to fix it by just cutting it off, but then he ends up like yeah. with just super hairy palm with, with a joke you saw coming oh, a million miles away. Immediately, I'm like, cue yeah. up the masturbation joke. This as guy's soon got, as he had his hands stuck to his hair, I saw that one coming. Guy's like, got hairier palms than Madela over here. <laughs> what? And uh, <laughs> just put it. In. Well, I know you, you shaved today, so it looks fine. It's not true, kids. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> It's just a little joke he tells. <laughs> Werewolf hands over here. <laughs> All right. Lassard is so pissed off by what's going on. He drives around town literally looking for a degenerate to beat up. Like he literally pulls up and now he's like, finally, I found one of you bastards. And he gets out of his car, starts what? rolling up his sleeves here. Right. Gonna Why? Kick your ass. Because he has to take out some frustration with what's happening. He's got a tie on. He's like a, a desk cop. Right. Yeah. He's, he's, a captain. he's a captain. And he drove around town until he found some in an alley. He checked every alley in the city until he finally found one and then parked and got out. And he was being kind of a badass and backing this dude, yeah. you know, down like, what are you doing? Where are you going? Come on, let's do this. And then he gets surrounded by gang members, which in any other movie, even some comedies, would mean that he would get stabbed, shot, beat up, yep. come back with, you know, bleeding something. No, no. These hardened criminals, graffiti a clown outfit onto him, yep. basically. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> Comedy. We're going to be the rainbow bum, game bum, bum. now, guys. <laughs> I still can't do that voice. I can't do it. Don't. <laughs> Sorry. Stop trying. Uh, <laughs> and this is where he comes in. He's like, this is war. So the cops are like, yeah, let's go. Because you went and sought out the gang by yourself yeah. without backup. And look what they did to me. And I look ridiculous. Mean, meanwhile, Admiral Akbar is on the balcony up there. It's a trap. That's right. <laughs> it's a trap. Let's go. Old guy who's never been in the movie till now shoots his gun up in the air. It's like, who's that? It doesn't matter. It's a desk pop. You won't see him again. Desk pop. You got to get it to desk pop. I love it. Yes. Such a good poll. And is Such this a good the threat poll. that this gang poses to yeah. grocery stores and everywhere they go? Yeah. It's like, they will paint us like clowns. That's I've what seen I'm them do it. Exactly. <laughs> this is it. Not guns, not murder. You will get a clown maker. Right. I mean, I'm a cop, but what if I was just a regular guy? Look at me. Right. I look ridiculous. 
It's horrible. All yeah. I wanted to do is beat the shit out of them. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to physically assault these guys. And they, I've been, I've been made to look like a fool here. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Eye for an eye. This is an eye for an eye. No. It's eye for a clown nose. It's time to murder these people. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. The so the, the montage then starts of them taking out. Now the cops are coming back, right? And so it's suddenly the competent of them taking out bad guys. And this is where we get Tackleberry and Kirkland. Arresting two guys. The go-to is always the guys robbing the TVs. Right? Yeah. That's always the go-to. It's always the one. Hands up. Oh, I don't have my cuffs. And so they go to get cuffs from each other, and their hands kind of touch, and it's like the music literally starts to swell. Saxophone comes on. Saxophone comes on, comes on right? And it's just like, oh, my gosh. And he <gasps> Cuffs. He slaps the cuffs on her instead of them, and then and she takes off her helmet, and, <laughs> and the, he starts to unzip her police uniform. <laughs> And uh, he's, <laughs> he pulls out his nightstick. And two guys, and they just start freaking making out in a pile on the ground. And these two guys, are st- I'm, ex- I'm exaggerating slightly. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, I think I downloaded the wrong movie. <laughs> That's, but then say, take the joke further, right? right? One guy's, you know well, and they kind of stopped at the, yeah, I got the wedding gift right here, yeah. you know? But it was so stupid the way they did that. It was. It was. Uh, two other bad guys were like, Hey, let's go beat up that guy with with the vegetables. I'm sick of him transporting veggies in our on our turf. <laughs> let's get his ass. Right? <laughs> it's just like this dude with boxes of like broccoli. And like, oh, yeah. Here we go. I'm gonna unload the greens. Again. Kobayashi's hey. vegetable company. And they're gonna, hey, here. I hate carrots. What are you get doing? Over. Maybe get they were getting veggies for Bobcat. Oh, that's he's a vegetarian. Oh, a vegetarian. I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> That was pretty hey, good you too. can't do a good one either. All right, so <laughs> here, here's what I'm going to put out there. We yeah. need people to actually call in with their best Bobcat voice for oh, our next call back. That's <laughs> going to oh, be terrible. On <laughs> oh, the no. quality of the calls, too. The oh, it's going to be great. Oh, like, like, <laughs> yeah, the window, they're like... <laughs> That'd be great. And in the middle of that, <laughs> I'm very sensitive <laughs> stomach. <laughs> So just gonna, I'm driving down the highway. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! What are we doing? Um, I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, this is when Motormouth Jones turns into Bruce Lee and wants to just beat up the. I love how he's only super confident or competent at martial arts when he's doing an impersonation of Bruce Lee because it's in other sense. movies too. Yeah. And I I don't care. This is one of the few jokes where I'm like every time he does this, I love it where he can talk. Like it's being like it's, a bad English dub yeah. of a kung fu movie, and it looks hilarious. And then he just is all of a sudden super competent at martial arts, and just starts waxing these dudes. And he's hanging off the freaking lights and the and the bars up there, and kicking and snapping dudes' necks. And I wish. Uh, and, and this whole time, this the, the acting performance from vegetable guy who's just in the truck going, "Oh yes, I enjoy this. <laughs> it's my favorite." <laughs> 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 It would be your favorite. Oh, I love it. Oh, like, <laughs> and it's broccoli. Yeah. No, broccoli. No. And they did it right because you could tell they dubbed it over too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't him. Oh yeah, it was very nice. <laughs> right, like, <laughs> it's like, I like that. It's not the cauliflower. Not the cauliflower. <laughs> oh, thank you, police it's officer not man. To be that funny. I don't know what that is, no, it it's is. unintentionally hilarious. Right. All the yeah. stuff they were intending to be funny, no, well, not. Yeah. But yeah. this. Fantastic. Uh, Sweet Chuck is now chased into the Blue Oyster Bar because this is a police academy movie, and so you have to have a scene at the gay bar. They did it in the first one. Now they're back at the Blue Oyster Bar, and it's right after the the tango championship or whatever. You see the banner yeah. in the back. And so the Sweet Chuck gets chased in there, and all the gang members go in there, and it starts a big brawl. And Mahoney tries to go in, and he gets yeeted back out like immediately back into the alleyway. And here comes Hightower. Like, don't go in there, man. Don't go in there. Well, Hightower goes in there, and bodies just start flying out the back door of this place. In And they just stack the bodies in the truck, in a caged yeah. truck for, like, transporting badgers or whatever. <laughs> it's just, and they're just stacking the bodies four high. And, like, that's unnecessary use of force? Please, you were a cop. That's unnecessary use of force. You can't just stick them in a back of a pickup truck in a cage and drive them to the police station. That's what I figured. Guess criminals get to get away with whatever they want. Do you think the costume designer on that scene was having trouble too? Like, okay, so the, the bad guys are going to go into the gay bar and... Well, how, how are we going to know who's who? 
because we already dressed these guys in in leather. Yeah, maybe a leather <laughs> captain's hat. Because these guys, <laughs> these guys look like gang members and police officers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and these guys just look like gang members. And and Steve Gutenberg Steve. looks like he goes to this bar. So <laughs> I, you know, I was going to say, no. What if Gutenberg still had his sleeveless uniform? That's on, what I'm saying. He doesn't dude. get thrown out then. That's why they had like, they had to throw a, him out because he didn't have a sleeveless think he uniform. Where you got the anyway. balloon idea? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Like, we got to go back. In, they, this is a late rewrite. We got to shoot a scene we stick in before this where he gets a new uniform or, or we can't do this yeah, scene. it doesn't work. It doesn't Got to do it. It's not going to make any he sense. He told him at the bar, get yeah. some chocolate, put it in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I do this with children every time it works. Oh, Kids love it. Kids love it. You're, you're telling me after My all name these... is Chris Hansen from Dateline. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Have a seat. <laughs> Have a seat. You're telling me after all these years that... The Blue Oyster is not a biker bar? No. <laughs> no. Oh, you sweet summer you child. No, I'm sorry. No. I have to be the one to tango oh, biker no. bar. <laughs> not a tangoing biker enthusiast, uh, you know, spot. I got to make a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's ridiculous. Um, here's another ridiculous thing that happens, and it's just like each scene's basically a sketch, right? And so that's why it's just like, and then this, and then this, because yeah. nothing really leads to the next thing. But Mahoney writes up a body cavity search form. In the in the police station, uh, to which apparently you can do for anybody. You could just write up, "We need a body cavity search for this person." Captain signs off on it, and then someone from the body cavity search team upstairs in that department will downstairs. come. Will come downstairs, and they'll mean business, okay? Because she came. They stomped at this nurse and these two giant dudes. Yeah, it's a rape squad. <laughs> it's like they just sit around upstairs in the body cavity search department and wait for someone to file a just form. So they're doing and they're just like, like give me the form. Right, cuz she yeah, comes down form. the stairs. <laughs> right? And, and they go, "Who is it? Who's the who's the person?" Like, "Why are you so angry? This is your job." And she's like pissed that she has to be here to well, do Well, you this. might be pissed I wouldn't too be you're... very happy. You're, you're saying you'd be happy to search. I'm saying it's her <laughs> job. She should treat it. it it'd be like, you know, to her, it should be like, it's a Tuesday, right? I mean, like. That's uh, fair. That's I mean, but that's fair. You or wouldn't like, be mad but digging around in like, asses all day? Oh, yes. Let me pull this glove on and we're going to have a good time. Me and, like, <laughs> is this the, the first game. time she's done <laughs> <laughs> I figured she'd be like Janine in the Ghostbusters. We got one! We got one. <laughs> exactly. How often is this happening? And they just grab another officer, throw him on the table, and like, is it standard protocol for a body search to tape their mouth shut? Is that? Yeah, I think it is. St yeah, no. standard procedure? It's okay. California. It was right. disturbing. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, speaking of disturbing, Tackleberry goes on a date with Kirkland. Um, they meet up at her place, and he's in awe of her civilian attire right it's the first mm -hmm. time i've ever seen you in civilian attire is it do you not approve negative it's wonderful or whatever it's the first know. time i've seen you in a clown suit <laughs> <laughs> whoa uh he gives her a pair of handcuff earrings and suddenly it's so moist in there he needs to wipe the fog off of his glasses it's just like the perfect gift he's already in he uh they take her dancing and into and, and dinner and they come back to the room and he's about to leave. She's not going to invite him in. And at the last second, she turns around and says, Tackleberry, I love you. <laughs> Music swells. He comes into the room. They start to make out, all that stuff. And I actually, a thing that I thought worked, and Colleen Camp gets credit for the physical comedy here, the sultry pull down of the bed yeah. straight back into his arms, I thought actually was pretty hilarious. And well, and well done by her. And he just stares at the bed like he's never seen a bed before with a girl. I mean, he's just like, Dee. I don't usually sleep in a bed. Right. Where does he sleep? I think he's kind of like a bat. He just hangs upside down. <laughs> <laughs> On a pile of guns. <laughs> a pile of, <laughs> a pile of guns. That's right. Oh, my gosh. Uh, That's anyway. one of those jokes that should have went further. Yes. Yeah. Yes. More weapons on More the weapons. More exactly. weapons. They start to disrobe, and she had a pretty form-fitting dress on. And then all of a sudden, underneath her form-fitting dress, she's got six Glocks and, you know, a Magnum and all and this RPG. stuff. RPG. RPG. <laughs> now, that if should have been taking it further. Talk about taking it further. Oh, yeah. There should have been an RPG dropped on the ground. Perfect. You're getting into, like, hot shots territory yeah. at that point. True. Uh, they end up doing it, and then I think one of them shoots the other one. Um, the gun goes off, and she goes, oh, what's his name? Tackleberry. Tackleberry. Eugene. Oh, Tackle oh, Eugene. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. first name. Right. Right. This is, like, the only time she's done that. How do we fix this town, you guys? Nothing's working. <laughs> how do we fix you it? You know how I would fix it? Oh. 
I'd have a fair. Booster. A street fair? Street fair. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't like a good street fair? <laughs> street fair. That's going to fix everything. The cops will run these carnival games in the middle of the road, and that'll fix the town. How do we make sure the audience knows that that's what's happening, though? Well, we show Hightower doing the strongman competition. Yep. And we, got, we, we, we have a big of, banner up that says street fair. Yeah, that's I, right. I don't think they're going to get it. Maybe um, what if the gang <laughs> has a detailed monologue? <laughs> About <laughs> what Those exactly are be is prizes that? and games and rides? Well, yeah. <laughs> the Ferris wheel. <laughs> yeah. I hate Ferris wheels. Well, you don't have to ride on it. I've got a sensitive stomach. <laughs> I love, I, I'll just say it now. I love Bobcat. I love it. Yeah. I know his whole shtick, and it's the voice that he did all through the 80s. I know he's got to the point where he won't do it anymore, right? Because he got so pigeonholed. But it's hilarious, and some of the only genuine laughs I had were from his, you know, yeah. his thing about his mother, or or the fact that he's a vegetarian or a sensitive stomach, or his little like very vulnerable moments that he has. Right? He's good. It works. He's, yeah. he's, he's good. Just a hell of a guy. No, he's good. Uh, the gang. There's like ten gang members, and they absolutely destroy this fair that is laced with police officers throughout the entire thing. Right. They come in, ruin the whole thing. The mayor is it's now sitting there having a. Uh, Zed is Bobcat's name in the movie. Is having a whole conversation with Zed. And he's like, "I voted for you." Um, <laughs> I did like that. <laughs> but yeah, that's the question. Just, Where are the cops? The, the cops are hosting this. They're all there. How right, are but, they? Also, it, this gang doesn't seem to pose any danger to anybody because they never do anything violent right. or dangerous or any other than they cause trouble, right? But it's like the it's like the A Team episode uh, on television or GI Joe, where like no one gets shot, no one gets hurt, nothing bad ever happens to anybody. But we're also that also means there's no stakes. Clown paint, clown paint, clown paint, clown paint. Yeah. right? Like the, the stakes are just non-existent. And so you never feel like anybody's in any real danger, which can be used in mind well for comedy. Just because it's a comedy doesn't mean it has to be like so ridiculous. Uh, I, I don't know. Well, I, the first one they had pretty good stakes at the end with yeah. that shooter on the roof, but they didn't use it for comedy purposes right. or comedic purposes. Right. So then it actually didn't work because they didn't lean into the comedy of it. And even in Naked Gun, like the bad guys felt like they were actually bad and they yeah. could do some damage yep. and somebody could get killed or hurt or whatever. I mean, that's a full on parody, right? But it's just, they just missed the mark so badly with this, with that personally, in my opinion here. Um, all right. Final straw. At this point, Lassard is out. They, they also suspend Mahoney and Vinny immediately. Mauser's now in charge. It's Captain Mauser. And so the three of them meet at a bar, the, the people that have been ousted, and they go, okay, here's what we're going to do. We don't have any money to help you or budget or backup or anything, but you're going to go undercover with this gang, and you're going to go by the name Jughead, who used to run with the Archies. <laughs> Get it? Make sure not to. <laughs> I, that verbatim, I think, was probably in the writer's room. Yeah. Somebody in the sure. far background went, hey, you, you guys get it? Because <laughs> the Archies. Because it's funny, because it's comic. Cause it's comic, yeah. yeah. No, Remember yeah. the comic? That was a great comic. Do you think the director was like, okay, Steve, make sure you don't do a good job acting <laughs> as a gang member? He could Steve Goober can't Steve even Goober? act tough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, that was going to be my best actor award. Whoever played Jughead. <laughs> Jughead. Was so real, man. Yeah. He was so real. Here's his audition for being in the gang. Oh, I'm a crazy person, <laughs> and I'm going to bang things with a stick and destroy stuff. And oh, oh, I'm, I'm, oh my name's Jughead. I'm Jughead, and I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a gang member in another gang, man. I'm You don't mess with me. Don't sit so close to me. I'm crazy, man. I'm like, <sighs> yeah. Um, bro can't even act tough. Right, <laughs> and these much. other other dopes are like, have you never heard of the did RC you see comic? This guy? <laughs> Look what he did to that phone booth. He broke glass. Yeah, he he banged the bars on that window over there. Oh my gosh, we got to get him into the gang immediately. He's we don't even useless. damage property. <laughs> Imagine we, what we could have done in that grocery store with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's crazy. Probably That's pretty much my uh, clown paint. <laughs> <laughs> and they're so stupid. When Jones uh, and the other cop, real cop, pull up, 
He literally calls him Jones uh, yeah. in the interaction. He's like, Jones, Jones, easy, easy. And nobody puts it together. I'm like, I know he's got his his like nameplate on, but you can't see that. Like, no, bro, come on. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Um, they they stuffed that car the, with the whatever's in the back seat in the beginning. Yeah, because they shoot the engine and it does the same exact thing. You're right, he shoots the yeah. he shoots up the cop car. Yeah. Right, and, and basically gives the winky face to Jones to be like, hey, oh, I'm undercover. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, okay, cool. Let me just blow the shit out of your squad car here, <laughs> and that'll get me in. Uh, but before we go on with the movie or the plot, let's take three minutes to follow Tackleberry to Kirkland's parents' house. Yes. Because this is a super important scene. We that have matters. to have it in there. And how do these people entertain themselves? Boxing match in <laughs> the living room. Beat the shit out of each other. This is the weirdest thing. <laughs> this is so stupid. Sorry. Yeah. That, it's so stupid. Yeah. And out of nowhere and weird and I don't get why that pertains to her love of guns. Yeah. yeah. Like I watched my dad beat the shit out of my brother for yeah. a long time. Who has a firearm? <laughs> I got to imagine <laughs> her too, right? Yeah. I'm yeah. I'm assuming. And why is Mrs. Futterman here? Right? <laughs> That's the other thing. To and hold the boxing bag, I guess. To, <laughs> to do something. Someone falls down, get him abandoned. Oh, my God. It was just a nothing scene. Like, you could have cut from the... I know it's like this B-plot. The only bleep, bleep, the only B-plot they had throughout the whole movie so they could land the plane at the wedding. But you could have done that straight from the date to the wedding without yeah. the, you know... Didn't need that. Without no the scene of them. Yeah. Just the child abuse segment <laughs> of the movie. <laughs> cool. Back to the story, anyway, Mahoney needs to wear a wire. Uh, <laughs> but they use a microphone from Monday Night Football, yeah. right? Like they, they, they took, took from Howard Cosell. Yeah, say that. <laughs> and just still has the giant yellow. And, 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 and also supposedly is a radio. Yeah, now it picks up a radio frequency somehow. Okay, those you know those microphones that play AM radio? Yeah, I got those at Radio Shack all the time. Yeah, right. I think that was an actual toy. Was it really? Mr. Microphone. Mr. Microphone, you, yeah, 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 sure. And <laughs> I don't remember it at all. Yellow ball hanging out. Did it really? Yeah. I mean, it was a thing. Oh, that's see? why he said, is this a Mr. Microphone? He's like, don't look there. That went right don't over worry, my I head. I did some modifications. <laughs> because I just assumed that was something made up. I don't remember Mr. Microphone, but it probably was. It sounds like an 80s thing that they would have. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. It was a thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he goes to the bad guy hideout, and he's really overdoing it. Okay. Just every three seconds going, oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Hey, I hey, love this. This is really cool. This is great. Hey, really I like cool. the graffiti. Hey, man. Great bad guy hang out for gang members to hide in. Where are we? Aren't you glad we're all gang members and bad guys? <laughs> yeah. I love the posters and the, 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 the neon. Yeah, I love right. the neon. No, it's and great. the lights. What's the exact coordinates here again? <laughs> and at one point, he's like, we're in the zoo. We're in the zoo. Old zoo. Straight old into zoo. his shirt. Old zoo. We're the old zoo. Old zoo. Because, you know, they're all listening in or whatever. And it's like, come on, dude. Um, all, all of a sudden, Bill's Dolphins comes on the microphone. <laughs> 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 that's the most recent game. That's one that popped in my head. <laughs> oh, it's all good. Uh, <laughs> they do find Zed who's sitting there watching a family affair, uh, an old TV show, and he's he's into it. They're all idiots. They're all idiots <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because he doesn't notice that he's saying the old zoo straight into his shirt and all this. I mean, it's just and wearing a huge overcoat when it's eighty overcoat, degrees, ninety right. degrees. Yeah. Um, he uh, uh, he needs a light for his cigarette, and Zed just holds up a flaming hand, you know. And uh, he doesn't know how to ask for a light. I, I was like, the movie is off the rails at this point. <laughs> but the the they, they find the wire on him. Long story short, I'm trying to cut this down as much as possible. Yeah. Long story short, they find the wire on him. The cops are rolling in. The cops put out the APB to the because they're all suspended to the other cops who are all like Mahoney's in trouble. They're at the old zoo, so everybody the cops are coming to descend. Meanwhile, they're setting up like a knife fight from Beat It, like the Michael Jackson video, <laughs> you know, where they've got to like strap yeah. their hands to each other and they've each got like rubber knives, like the most rubbery knives I've ever seen in a movie in my life, and they're gonna have a knife fight. While the cops are showing up, but it's like hands of steel. You know, no one's getting cut, right? Yeah, yeah. You just well, know. they were blocking each other's. It was like the knife fight in Under Siege. Like they just kept <laughs> hitting each other's knives. Like yeah, you can't do that. It was you way also don't better. aim at the knife. Right. The Under Siege fight's way better, but <laughs> I kind of wish Steven Seagal would have showed up. And stabbed oh him. no! <laughs> Steven Seagal would have played the scene exactly flat as a board just so you know i'm not a cop and i'm so excited to be a gang member 
Right. It was just they sent me in here undercover. <laughs> Please. But I don't need that shit. <laughs> I'll stab you in the face right That's now. Right. <laughs> Let me show you how to bake a cake. I'm not a cop, but if I was, you'd all be dead. You all got a microwave on here. In real life, I'm a cop. <laughs> but I'm also I am a cop and you're all under arrest. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Just kidding. Not a cop again. <laughs> but I got you see. Thing. I can clearly convince you of anything <laughs> because my old bushido in Japan. Oh, shut up, dude. <laughs> Do you have an office chair? I need to roll. <laughs> uh, the cops roll in. Mauser literally falls in on a rope tied to Fackler through the roof of this place, and just kind of chaos ensues. Motormouth Jones is making machine gun noises through his megaphone, and that's doing something i guess and uh hightower doesn't want to go by the rat so he's just waiting for people as they come outside and they're just rounding up these bad guys who are no threat at all no threat at all none whatsoever uh there is one part i, I do want to say that the one time in the whole movie i actually laughed out loud and it's a stupid joke but it all was in bobcat's delivery when as he's he's leading he actually pulls a gun first time a bad guy's pulled a gun on anybody in yeah. this movie and he's got mahoney going up the stairs and he's like hey man we can talk he's like ah! in the mood and then the other guy the captain shows up and says freeze i'm in the mood now so where are you from <laughs> that was good i like that that was, that was a good like joke yeah. yeah right oh yeah um that was the only time i audibly laughed at the entire movie, right? that impression's getting better oh, it is getting okay. better I'm, I'm dialing it in okay um anyway he gets how, how does he get knocked down the stairs i forgot about because somehow he gets punched by mahoney yeah Mo I thought it was Lassard. Or Lassard. Yeah, Lassard. Well, Lassard, Lassard's got the gun that yeah, Lassard, doesn't have oh, I think right. it was Mahoney when they were reaching for the gun. Oh, that's right. Okay. Mahoney came up, I think, and knocked him down. It turns out Lassard had no bullets in his gun. Right. He hasn't since 73 or whatever. He falls down saying, that didn't hurt, that didn't hurt, that hurt. Okay, that hurt. And finally, Hooks is at the bottom to say, like she does in every movie, her one moment where she's always like, all of a sudden, not quite as a mouse, but freeze dirtbag or whatever, yeah. and, and puts them away. She, she said the thing. Yeah, she says the thing. And that no bullets in your gun thing, that means that Barney Fife is a better cop than you. <laughs> right. right. Because yeah. he at least had one bullet in his chocolate pocket up yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. The movie wraps up with, as we said before, a wedding. And if you haven't guessed it by now, the wedding is Tackleberry and Kirkland getting married. And Chloe shows up for the first time ever. Now, I want to go back to this real quick because uh, Gutenberg kind of a dick behind the scenes in this movie in that Chloe had five or six scenes and there was a whole subplot of her being his romantic interest in this movie and it's the only police academy movie where there's not some girl for Steve Gutenberg, right? Like Kim Cattrall's in the first one. Mm -hmm. Fourth one, they got Sharon Stone in there for him. I don't know who's in the third, but regardless, he just didn't like her and didn't think she was hot enough and said, like they were supposed to have a kiss on the Ferris wheel at the, at the fair and all this stuff and he goes, I wouldn't kiss her. Like, my character wouldn't kiss this woman. And, like, literally, yeah, was just like, no, all her scenes got cut. And she ends up just in the beginning. And, the, and that's why she's randomly a bridesmaid, because it's supposed to be like. She was supposed to be throughout, you know, throughout right, the so whole So he thing. went all Seagal and said, oh, yeah. yeah. She's not said, enough for me. No, not enough, good enough. And yeah, that poor woman wow. just got sidelined basically by Gutenberg at the height of his Hollywood powers, could make his own, you know, make his own calls, I guess, on that stuff. And yeah, kind of crappy. I can't believe it. No, I'm, I'm going to have to burn my Steve Gutenberg fan club card. Oh, oh. dang. Only four left, guys. Only four <laughs> left. <laughs> uh, he drives away in Bigfoot, which that's pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Right? The I thing like is that. freaking huge it's, when regular it's the humans. the 80s. You have to have Bigfoot yeah. in there. Yeah. It's good stuff. Were those kegs they were dragging behind, too? Yeah. yeah. The, yeah, the, that's, that's the barrels cool. from Jaws. Yeah. 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 Uh, and that's the end of the movie, guys. Thank God. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank God. You really didn't like... I mean, I know we're getting to final verdicts later, but... You seemed very annoyed that you had to watch this movie. Choose wisely. I will say this was a step up from Police Academy for me. Oh, wow. Whoa. Because the beginning scene and that one scene where he goes, so... <laughs> I'm not going to try to do the voice, but we're like, so, so where are you Aww. from, right? Yeah. Uh, you're so sad, I can tell. No, uh, <laughs> those two made me chuckle a little, and there yeah. was a couple of bits that worked, but... yeah. Yeah. I, I, I respect it. I think there is one way we could make the movie better. How would we do that? Not by adding Steven Seagal uh, oh, yeah. at the end. But what if, I mean, this is 1985, straight off of Commando, we get Arnold Schwarzenegger oh, yeah. to roll up and be in this movie. 
I think he would have crushed in this film. And and he yet hadn't had a chance to show he could do comedy by 1985 because Twins came in 86, 87. I, I, think, I so, think somewhere in there. So this would have been a perfect vehicle for him to, to show up. And, he, and it would have been the only cop that made sense to be sleeveless, not Steve Gutenberg. Right. Like Steve Gutenberg got his sleeves off looking like he's all ripped. And then Arnold just comes up and stands next to him and be like, oh. Bro looks like Jackson. I don't Ellison. have any chocolate in my pocket, but you're going to give me some candy right now, little boy. <laughs> okay. Right? Be awesome. Uh, I think, uh, all joking aside, though, you, you put him in as the gang leader. Right? Instead of Bobcat? Instead of Bob. Yeah. I, mean, I love oh, Bobcat. I love Bobcat. Movie, right? but yeah. Same dialect and noises, though. The same. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I could do Arnold doing Arnold. Bobcat. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> yeah, I can't do it. There you Did go. Arnold Schwarzenegger work out his tongue? Is that how it got so big? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah. He's got yeah. little barbells for his tongue, yeah. even. Same thing. <laughs> Electrocuting. <laughs> Electrocuting, <laughs> suffocating, <laughs> rats. <laughs> like it doesn't matter. Joy, joy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. It's all the same thing. Let's see what some of the patrons have. Do you ever have a spot to stick Arnold in this movie that you want to put him in? Come on. I would have went with Bobcat, like you said. Bobcat, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, we got Aaron Nowak playing along. He goes, replace Tim Kazerzynski. Yes. Sweet Chuck with Arnold. Wait, wait, wait. wait. With no. the cast still? <laughs> everything would be so no. stupid. The, the cast would be like this big around. It'd be as big as a freaking six he, foot tall. And he wouldn't need a bear. I'm the bear trap, okay? No, you just rewrite it. <laughs> you rewrite it where he's he... at the door with his arms open. <laughs> come here. I come on. You. Come on. I'm right here. Kill me. I'm here. <laughs> no, you want I, laps? <laughs> Come on! I got laps. I think. I like think he would sell so many lamps, yeah. dude. I'd be. I'd, They'd have to I raise a like, ceiling right, on yeah, that he lamp would store. Sell shit. <laughs> he would grab people and be like, "You buy lamps? Get out of here!" <laughs> Sorry. The cardboard cutout is of himself. <laughs> I was going to say, the beginning would be him getting the keys from the guy, yeah, and then he just unlocks everything and just stands there and waits. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Uh, seeing Bobcat yelling in his face and Arnold having to take it, Hightower picking him up by his britches. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he'd need a crane. <laughs> uh, or being pushed around by the gang and during the robbery. I also think he'd be funny as Mauser being a suck-up to the higher brass trying to uh, get into the captain position or running around naked in the police station. That would be dangerous. It just turns around and takes three guys out. Uh, yeah. Uh, and Mahoney not being phased by his threats. It would be pure Hollywood gold from Aaron uh, Nowak. Uh, we got Taylor Greeny, and he says, imagine a clumsy Magoo like Arnold as Fackler and how much more damage he would do if he was Fackler. Yeah. I can't. I mean. Yeah, I mean. <sighs> Do you lean into it and he's like taking the building out when he falls to the Sorry. floor in the <laughs> lamp shop? He go there's that stupid throwaway scene with Fackler where he goes and gets a key from a gas from station. From the gas, yeah. Oh with yeah. The cinder block on it. Right. But he would just pick it up like it was no problem. But, well, imagine this though. The cinder blocks it's a big keychain stuck to the cinder block that holds the that's in the uh yeah. the part of the shop building yeah. and he just pulls the whole shop building he down. He just takes, takes the gas the station yeah, with yeah, him. Takes Got it with it. him to the oh, bathroom. That makes, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, and he he's not even clumsy in that scene. No. No. He's not even, it's like so oh he's clumsy and has irritable bowel syndrome. I don't know like what is the point. <laughs> Yeah, that. Yeah, that's, you're right. He doesn't even like wreck anything with the cinder block like you would think he would do, right? right. Which is like, what I was waiting payoff? for. What's the payoff? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Eric Valov playing along with us, and he says uh, comes in as rookie Jack Slater walking a beat, and so this is the <laughs> the prequel to Last Action Hero. Nice. Right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Because in in that movie they do that joke where where he's on the roof with the with the. Uh, the axe murderer guy is gonna yeah. kill me. Um, that I don't know the name, but he's he's he just drop drop the gun, and he just starts. And all you see his feet, and you see all these guns hitting the the floor. Right? Is that it? That about does it. Yeah, right. Perfect. It would have been perfect for that. That's the joke they should have had. Right. With the yeah. Sex scene with the gun nuts. Yeah, the sex scene is she pulls the bed out, and Arnold's already on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. If you want to be my lover, you got to get with my friend. Um, <laughs> All right, Dave Parkinson, all the way from Australia, playing along with us today. And uh, let's see. Ooh, did he do an Arnold? 
I don't think he did. No, no not, Arnold from David. Not Paul didn't do an Arnold. And uh, Tim says, uh, I would put Arnold in this movie as Zed. It'd be great hearing him do the Bobcat style of talking in this movie. Watching him get all emotional, watching Family Affair, and going shopping with the gang would just be pure gold. I'm a vegetarian. Uh, yeah, I think... I. Th- I don't think it'd be a good movie with Arnold. Let me get that straight. I think it's so bad that he can't rescue it, but it would certainly be better than it was. And that's the criteria. And that's the criteria. Yep. So Arnie wins again, as far as I'm concerned. Makes yet to find one that Arnie can't make better. You guys ready to give this movie some awards? Yeah. Yes. All right. We're going to start off with the uh, most prestigious award we give out. It's the actor who was, even though they're in the stupid movie, they're tr- you can tell they're actually trying. They're giving it everything they have. They're 100% committed to their character, and they're bringing intensity to the role. It's the Will Patton Award for Intensity. You want a war? I'll give you a war! I don't want them to gain another yard. You blitz all night. And if they cross the line of scrimmage, I'm going to take every last one of you out. You make sure they remember forever the night they played the Titans. All right. What are you doing with a gun in space? So we are going to get things kicked off here, and we are going right to Aaron Nowak, who says, Steve Gutenberg. Frickin' tore it up in this one. He delivered all of his lines like he knew one day he was going to make the most crappiest movie ever with Boyfriend School, which is far frickin' worse, and I'm I'm, uh, editing for him here, (laughs) than Santa with Muscles. Joe's about to fight you on that one, Aaron. Um, Didn't expect Gutenberg to come out to the early lead on the Will Patton, but as we go over here to Mel, uh, that's where we're at. One vote for Gutenberg. You know... I, I got to go with uh, Bobcat Goldthwait. Bobcat. Every, everything he did is just, you know, at 11. Yeah, dude. He was He's, he was notched up for sure. I think that's a good pick. Uh, Taylor Green says, I'm sorry here, but it's David Graff as Tackleberry. The character taught me what intensity was as a kid watching these movies. Ooh, I don't know about that. I don't know. They, d- they neutered Tackleberry in this one. I agree. David Graff won the Will Patton when we did Police Academy 1, I'm pretty sure. But I didn't I think feel it like did. it was the same level of no. performance from him in this movie. No, he was thinking uh, with a small head in this one, not his big head. Yeah, I'm not I'm not going with him. Nope. Sorry. Uh, but that is a vote for Tackenberg. So right now we've got three separate votes for three separate people as we head over to uh, Madela. Who you got, buddy? Uh, so I went with Bobcat as well. Oh. I know that it was kind of his bit to do that, yeah. but he still was really trying to do that, right? I mean, he was, he was hard, going hard yeah. with it. Yeah. No, for sure. Uh, Eric Valov says, uh, Steve Gutenberg. I always see him as Mahoney in these. I mean, with this, it's like I don't see the actor. I see the character when he is in these films. Man, the patrons love themselves some Gutenberg. It's a tie right now. Two to two. Well, I guess we found the other two members or two remaining members of the Gutenberg fan club. (laughs) But uh, I'll tell you, I'm going to just throw my hat in with Bobcat on this one. Uh, I wish he was in like seven more scenes than he was in. Uh, He saves the movie. Uh, saves it from, I don't know what, being even more terrible. But I, I every time he was on screen, I was like, oh, thank God. Uh, I, I just wanted him to be in it more. He was 100% in. I know he was doing his shtick, but I thought he crushed it in this movie. And so I'm also going Bobcat. Makes it three to two. Uh, and then Dave, don't call him Paul Parkinson, says, uh, before I start, I just wanted to know who I send the invoice to to get reimbursed for uh, doing this movie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow. He goes the <laughs> the the uh, the Will Patton goes to David Graff as Tackleberry. He's always intense. Let's two for Tack, did, two for Gutenberg. Did these people watch the same three movie? for Bobcat? I don't. I don't know what they do in Australia. They watch the movies upside down. They're on the other side of the world. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay, what yeah. you got? All right. So to me, there's only two people in this Jurassic park-sized dung pile of a movie <laughs> worthy of consideration. That's Mauser feel? and Bobcat. <laughs> I'm going Bobcat, man. Bobcat. All right. I, I'm like you. I wish he was like more of a central character in this movie. Yeah, I agree. And they obviously thought the same thing because he's in the next two Police Academy movies as a cop. Yeah. They literally hire him to be a cop. So they obviously went, well, we need more of that guy. Yeah. Well, and think about it. He never really committed a felony, I guess. Right. No. Yeah. So Hey, he just had this little shopping trip, you know. It's true. A little hangout at the old zoo. 
Tim says uh, Bobcat is also his pick. He brought the right amount of intensity when he was on the screens. That's another vote from Tim. So Correct it's answer. not out of reach yet because it's still 5-3 as we head over to the kids' table. So, Brian, who you got as your Will Patton nominee? Uh, it's not Tackleberry. Okay. I, I agree. <laughs> Tackleberry in this movie is like the campfire scene in the first one. <laughs> you know, it's just like wide-eyed. And yes. like, yeah. I don't know about girls. He did yeah. that through the whole movie for yeah. this one. Um, I would probably go with Zed. Yeah. But since he's probably going to win here anyway, yeah. I'm going to give it to, because uh, I just think it'd be funny, the water cooler in the <laughs> lamp store <laughs> is pretty much a character in the movie. You're right, it is. Yeah. I didn't even mention him. <laughs> they re- interact with the with the thing. Every t- oh, it does that. It does, it does that. that. You're right. Yeah, it almost scares it's the guy that's shooting him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great performance. Yes. Hit his marks. You're one right. Of, one of the best. <laughs> uh, Dave, who you got for your Will Patton? Uh, I think it, 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 this is polishing a turd yeah. all the way around here but it's <laughs> it's gotta be Zed it's gotta yeah. be yeah. for it so. yeah right dialed in that means uh, Bobcat's gonna win the Will Patton Award so give it up for Bobcat great great job here I don't remember almost anything about three and four I know he's in them I hope he's as good in those as he was in this and I have no idea if we're ever gonna do those movies because my brain hurts after doing the first two <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, it's time to give out an award that should be a much easier to give out for this movie. Uh, it's the acting award for the worst performance. It's named after Steven Seagal. It's the Steven Seagal Trash Can Full of Dirt Award. Trash Can, oh Trash Can, it's a trash can full of dirt, yeah. Love never dies, and neither do they. Love is eternal, and that's a long time. All right, here we go. We start again with Aaron, and Aaron says, uh, Tim Heldman as Tim the guy driving the truck <laughs> yes. in the ocean, the douchebag on the beach. I'm pretty sure they just saw this guy chilling in the parking lot and asked if he wanted to make a quick 20 bucks. How high was this guy when he was delivering his four words of dialogue? And screw him for ruining everybody's good time, especially with those lovely ladies tanning. Mm. Aaron, getting uh, taking up defense of the girls. I appreciate that for you, Aaron. What do you got over there, Mel? So... It's not because I hate this guy. Oh, nice preface. I'm, I'm putting it out there because <laughs> it's not because I hate this guy or because he's a, a, a piece of garbage. But uh, Jim Boyce as the preppy guy. Oh, the guy from the... There was no point to that scene. There was no point to that character. I mean, you literally could have just put the dumpster where people dump their food in and he could have made it squeak. And it would have been just as funny. You love these guys so much that you pulled yuppie guy from the diner to give the trash can to no (laughs) (laughs) no i love it i respect it man for sure uh next one comes uh, fat thumbs uh we got taylor greeny coming back with his uh trash can he says i'm sorry but i have to give it to george gaines as commandant lassard in a movie where you have so many different characters contributing something to the movie, he just doesn't. The only thing he did for me was put the goldfish on the grill so we could get the line, oh, you want stir fry? Yeah, which I just skipped over yeah, because it was another nothing. nothing scene yeah. in the movie. And so that's a vote for George Gaines as we head over to Madela. Who you got, buddy? Gutenberg. Shocker of all shockers. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow, weird. Oh, good for he's you. Just, <laughs> he's not believable as a gang member he's not believable as a cop he's not believable as having any sort of muscle mm. he's not believable as anything he just sits there like i'm steve gutenberg i believe that johnny That's five it. was alive <laughs> <laughs> not even the same movie yeah but if he's gonna if you watch on gutenberg if you I'm watch this, save him. in this movie in this okay. movie okay. if you watch this movie and you went man i love short circuit that's not good for this movie <laughs> Okay, uh, Eric Valov comes in and says, Lance Kinsey, uh, he was better in three and in the later films, but this one, he just didn't bring much. And so we're, we're spraying to all was, fields here. Who was he? Isn't that, Pro- that that's uh, a, Proctor? a Proctor. Yeah. Oh, it's Proctor? Yeah, it's Proctor. Okay. Yeah. Not great. I think part of the problem no, is he's that... No, he's a dumbass. <laughs> part of the problem is that there's so many options. Yeah. I'm going off... I'm, I'm voting for somebody that hasn't been picked yet, too, and this is probably one that's going to get flames shot up my booty uh, because this is a beloved person but I thought Dave Graff kind of sucked in this movie and I know you love Tackleberry and uh, so does everybody but I didn't think it, it just from an acting standpoint I love the character they neutered him in this one and then in every scene I didn't because acting is truth right and I didn't believe a word he said this entire movie not when he said he was a virgin not when he was like 
just staring at her like, oh, oh. Yeah, doe eyes the whole movie. I just, just like they they and part of it's the filmmaker's fault. They put him in the subplot where he's just being lovey dovey the whole time, and he's not even there at the final no. battle. And that's what he was. He was just like a subplot character the whole movie. Like right. he didn't even do outside of shooting the tear gas into the car. He didn't really do any police shit like no. we saw in the first movie. No. So David Graff gets mine for this one. Sorry, guys. He was supposed to be this film's Jack Sparrow, but it just didn't work out. No, it didn't. Well, Should have gave him a better bar, jar of dirt then. <laughs> uh, Dave Parkinson also went Lance Kinsey as Proctor, the first guy to get two votes, I think, so far, right? Mm -hmm. Useless. Did nothing. Mueller, who you got? Boy, there's no shortage in here of the, in this movie to pick from. Yeah. But I'm going to go with Tim, James. <laughs> Tim, Tim, the driver. Uh, all right, so there we go. We got we got two for Proctor, two for Tim. You scared the crap out of me when you did that because I wasn't looking, and I was like, "Oh my god, what's happening? Our lamp store's getting robbed." Uh, all right, cool. Uh, Tim, Tim came in and said uh, it has to go to Michael Winslow uh, as a Motormouth Jones. Look, I know he does the whole mouth noise thing, and it made me laugh when I was a kid. But watching this for the first time in a while, he can't act to save his life. His performance was definitely the worst thing about this movie. I don't think Michael Winslow ever was accused of being an actor. He's a comedian, no. yeah. right? And it right. was just like, he's doing he his Michael his thing. Winslow thing. So, But I, I mean, hey, Tim, I get it, man. Well, we still sit right now at a tie. So as we go over to Brian, who is your trash can, man? That's <clears throat> It's tough because though Tackleberry wasn't what you wanted him in the, in the movie, I'm not sure it was because of his acting chops. Yeah. I, I really think he was served up an awful platter to play. Yeah. You know, it's just... It's not his character because that's the thing about this movie is it's this collection of cartoon characters. You right, know, it's a Looney Tune gang mm -hmm. that gets together and they each have their own pillar to stand on. Right, and he didn't have his pillar for this movie. So, right, so uh, I don't know if it's necessarily his fault. And for that reason, it's hard to pick one of those guys. Yeah, to say like uh, you did an awful acting job. It's sort of yeah. like I don't know. It, it's sort of what they were given. Sure, so I'm gonna. I'm not going to scream it, but I'm going with Oh, Tim. Tim. That's a <laughs> third vote for well. Tim. Tim was awful. Was but terrible. you're right. They like they want to see Hightower yeah. do his Superman stuff. Yep. They want to see Hooks be a little mousy thing and then scream at somebody, right, and all that. And, the yeah. only one that really got to do that was Michael Winslow. Yeah. I mean, true. everyone else, even Fackler, the clumsy guy, like, like yeah. I said, he didn't even get to it. He had one scene where he knocked the, the hood down yeah. on somebody. And, right. Well, and he and knocked accidentally, Mouser down the, yeah. shaft, oh, right, right. the, the yeah, shaft, too. But, yeah, he they, they like didn't, in this movie took everything away from these characters of what they were in the first movie. Right. You're right. Uh, all right, Dave, who you got, man? Uh, this time, I think I'm going to go with Punky Brewster's dad. <laughs> <laughs> because George. he was a big part in the first one. Yeah. And then it was like, well, what's that WKRP guy doing right now? Because <laughs> yeah. we only have Punky Brewster's dad for a day. Right. So we can get one goldfish joke out of him, and then it's got to be this other guy. Yeah. So he was barely in it, and yeah. I think he could have done way better with what he did have. So I hear Punky you. Brewster's dad. <laughs> Perfect. Plant your flag. I love that, man. Yep. And, it's like planted. And, and yeah, honestly, dude, he uh, Howard Hessman was so upset that he did this movie, he refused to return for any sequels. So that's why, uh, you know, the WKRP guy is just never in another Police Academy movie. He was supposed to be in like three, four, five. Nope. He's like, yep, not, don't even try to enforce my contract because I'm not going to show up. It was kind of crazy. Uh, but that means that with uh, with three votes, ultimately, that Tim, the Chad driving the truck down the ocean, or down the beach at the ocean, is going to win the Trash Can Full of Dirt Award. Well-deserved. I'm Tim, that. and I won an award. <laughs> Tim Haldeman. Yeah, is that his last name? Tim Haldeman. Oh, uh. bless you, Tim. Uh, we're moving on to the uh, now positive award that we give out to someone that was in a small part. Uh, that wasn't one of the main characters, but that their presence made the movie better for whatever little time they were in it. It's the Steve James Unsung Hero Award. You know, every place you go, there's always someone who thinks he's a badass, right? Then there are those few who are. <laughs> are you still kind of a badass karate boy? Not many in this one, unfortunately, but... 
we're going to actually, we'll start with Aaron as we have been doing, or let's do Tim first. Cause he's on top of my pile here. Uh, he goes, I give it to Lance Kinsey as Proctor love his character in the movie and wanted more of him for him taking pictures of drunk fruits at the bar. I forgot about that. Uh, and to not to knowing the address of the blue oyster bar, uh, his comedic timing and uh, was great. And so that's a vote for Lance Kinsey after getting two votes for the trash can. Mel, who you got? I don't know which one he is. It's either Sandy Ward or Bob Elmore for the officer that fired off the dust pop. Oh, the old guy in the in the meeting room. The old guy in the in the squad room there. Yep. All right. He I, just, I don't know which one which guy he is. It's it was so two. random. Was it like, was so random. It just it. Who's it was that? Icing on the top of the cake. All right. Perfect. All of a sudden, uh, we got uh, Aaron Nowak here, and he goes, Bobcat. I know he's playing himself, but he's locked the frick in and makes the movie so much better for it. His scenes just hit the spot. They obviously realized they needed more of him. That's why they brought him back for three and four. Yeah, I think he's in a small enough part to qualify. Uh, not the main character. I think the main antagonist for the movie is actually Mauser, more oh, so yeah, than yeah, Bob, yeah. more yeah. so than Bobcat. Uh, but uh, Ryan, who you got, man? Uh, I would say. Um the merchant, the Tim Tim Kazerzinski. Kazerzinski. I really liked his Sweet part. Chuck. Yeah. Yeah, he was good. And he's a former SNL guy, I think, right? In the 80s? I think he, yeah, I think he was doing SNL. Yeah. Honorable mention, though, to Bobcat, for sure. Nice. Uh, Taylor Greeny says, I would give it to Lieutenant Mauser's wig. Uh, but <laughs> no, that was terrible. Uh, but I'm going to give it to the body cavity search nurse. Oh, boy, was she looking forward to that a little too much. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's get, gets born on the third floor. Yeah. You know? I'm like, the glove is on, lady. Get to it. Uh, Eric Valov jumping in, and he says uh, T, uh, Tim Kazerzinski as Sweet Chuck, which is also who I'm going with. I'm going with Tim Kazerzinski as well. So me and Eric rarely, uh, as we are in lockstep here. Ryan, who you got? I am going to give honorable mention to Bigfoot because it's <laughs> oh, Bigfoot. Oh, the truck. I'm like, I, for a second, I was like, was Bigfoot? No, not, not Sasquatch. Was this movie? Where would, yeah, Sasquatch was not in this movie. It would track. but There yeah, was okay. some grainy footage, I think, in one scene, but gotcha. not confirmed. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to go with Bobcat. I'm, I was okay. like, I'm glad you said he was in it a, a small amount enough because yeah. I was really struggling to figure yeah. out who in this movie. He's only was, in like four scenes. Yeah. Who in this movie's uh, would, you know, kind of their performance made it better. Sure. Definitely his. So I'm going with Bobcat. All right. Fair enough. Uh, and then we got Dave Parkinson here says uh, Michael Winslow as Jones deserved more airtime and was at least entertaining. If not him, then Bubba Smith as Hightower. They did Bubba Smith dirty in this yeah, movie. The Hightower didn't. needed to be in it way, way more. And he himself uh, was expressed his frustration during the making of the film, how much he was sidelined for newer characters, and I agree with Bubba for sure. Brian, who you got? My flag says Sweet Chuck as well. Sweet Chuck. And yeah, and the reason is he was able to play his cartoon character the way that he needed to, to be a great character. Yeah. And he was an awesome compliment to Bobcat. Absolutely. The times I laugh the most are when those two are screaming at each other. Right. <laughs> right. Can, can we just follow the two of them yep. around? Those two? No, awesome. And don't nice. they get paired up in the future ones? They I, do. They, do. Well, they, yeah. they still hate each other. And they're oh, still really? antagonistic towards each other in the, in the movie. Mm -hmm. When so. they become partners. That's right. That's right. Uh, who you got over there, Dave? I will also be putting my flag up for Sweet Chuck. I think that him being in the beginning of the movie kind of gave me false hope because that <laughs> first, the first part of that movie where he's doing the whole um, lockdown, bear trap, all that stuff, yeah. and then, hey, box, and ah! whatever, that was the yes. greatest part of the movie almost. And then... Uh, <laughs> It just, again, That's falls hilarious. off the cliff there. So That means that Tim Kazerzinski is going to win the Steve James Unsung Hero Award. Well deserved. And, uh, guys, it's now time. Uh, there's been much consternation and uh, discussion, and I feel like I know right about where everybody's at, but we have to land the plane. Uh, stick the landing, something they didn't do in this movie, and we've got to come. <laughs> oh, how do you to really feel? Our objective and our subjective measures here, right? And this is a hard thing to do sometimes to be objective about art, but we have to say, okay, is this objectively good or bad? And then how do we feel about it, right? So is it a bad movie that we like? It's a bad movie that rules. It's just a bad movie that's bad. Bad movie, full stop. Or is it a straight up objectively and subjectively? good movie and so we are going to start with dave parkinson who says uh look the writers of this movie wrote for snl and a load of eddie murphy movies so i the assumption of knowing comedy could be made but you couldn't tell from this movie 
Uh, nostalgia, though, I can't help it. Winslow sound effects. Bobcat was annoying. I blame the Stonecutters for making Gutenberg a star. He is terrible. Bobcat's gang is the least intimidating I've ever seen. This movie made Boyfriend School look like Citizen Kane. Bad movie. How are there seven of these things? How did it make $115 million? Dave, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I can't give you the answers that you seek. I can't. Mel. Being that this is a Police Academy movie, I'm going to reserve... My you, comment till last. You want to go last? That's because fine. Because I, I, I know where this is going to go, yes. and we need to kind of um, fix this at the end. So totally fine. I'm going to defer just based on being Sounds a Police good. Academy movie. Sounds good. Uh, Eric Valov says, boobs, 11 minutes and four seconds into the film. <laughs> uh, God, I love the 80s. Uh, it's been quite a few years since I've seen this. I think the last time was on Comedy Central in the late aughts. That's where I saw a lot of these movies late at night. Uh But in the 80s, I wore this VHS out. And then HBO would have the series up to six frequently on. So the nostalgia is strong. But that being said, a lot of flaws in this film. Once I didn't realize until I was writing this up, but but if this is supposed to be their first assignment, why the hell they show them in the field, (laughs) right? They graduated in the first film, so they would be transferred or be assigned to the 16th Prince instead of being called in. I think I just have to make the connection to Police Academy. They had to, so it was kind of shoehorned in. There were scenes that were apropos of nothing, like the flat tire scene or Fackler needing the bathroom. Uh, In other aspects, though, there were times the mise-en scene added to the world. The reason you don't hear the tango that is synonymous with the Blue Oyster Club is because the sign says that, that the competition just ended, and that's taking place in the first movie. Despite its faults, there were still times I laughed out loud and enjoyed the film, so... Bad movie that rules from hey! Eric Balov. Balov throwing all the buzzwords in there too. Bob, Bots. I hope Bob, Bob. I hope a cat thinks your Rice Krispies is a litter box. That's, <laughs> <laughs> lucky Bob's not here today. Uh, Madela. So, I was prepared to watch slapstick of another kind after this. Never seen it, but you talked so poorly about it <laughs> that I was ready to watch that to cleanse my palate oh, of this wow. movie. Uh, so I was going into it expecting nothing. Um, I was pleasantly surprised that it wasn't as bad as the first one. Yeah. Um, it's objectively a bad movie. I think that Bobcat and Tim... Kajerinsky? I think that they... Maybe it's on the briefcase. They did elevate the movie. But I think it's still a bad movie. Full, full stop. stop. Yeah. Ooh. All right. But it's... You almost wanted to go rules. I almost want to go rules, but I just... I can't. All right. I respect it, man. Sorry, Mel. Uh, why are you sorry? <laughs> he I, didn't I, make I just the movie. Oh, him. I know. He's already st- staring angrily Whatever, Mel. over Whatever, Mel. You're not my real dad. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor Green, he said, I used to watch these movies all the time. It didn't matter which. I just watched. When I started getting into this podcast, I'd ask, what is a quintessential BMR movie? These movies are the textbook definition of what a BMR movie is, for me at least. You know, it's stupid, but you just enjoy it, which is the definition of a bad movie that rules. It's just whether or not we think this one is stupid enough to enjoy. Uh, personally, I had I came in with a high expectations because... I remember enjoying the Police Academy movies uh, when I was younger. More five and six were the ones I gravitated towards. But I had seen these, and I just was so bummed out as I watched this. And I, I, I would get to scenes and go, I just remember this being so much better. And so I don't know if I'm just a jaded adult now or whatever. And as a kid, I didn't care and just thought it was, you know, guy fall down, funny. But it's bad. It's bad, and it's not funny. And I don't want to sound like a pretentious prick here, but it's I, I love to laugh. I, I feel like I'm an easy mark. I'm, 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 I don't think I'm a hard bar to clear for comedies. And I just sat there and stared at the TV for almost the whole movie. Until the end with that one part with Bobcat where I finally broke the silence in the room. <laughs> it's just not I, – I like – so here's what I want to say. I continue to like and appreciate the Police Academy franchise, Okay. This one's not it. And if we get to the point where we're ranking all seven of them, if we, God forbid, end up doing all seven of them, I got to imagine two is going to be near the bottom because I didn't think it was as good as one. Uh, personally, that's my take on it. Uh, we got Aaron Nowak says, look, I want to give out a couple other awards. Uh, the Thomas Thomas Award is one we give out for technical achievement. He says the ADR people who dubbed the Asian guy in the back of the truck. Good call. Um, <laughs> yeah. Good call. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. yeah. Yes. Nothing like adding a fake English Asian accent that doesn't match up to his mouth <laughs> at all and gives out his Sherilyn Fenn Award to the two tanning chicks at the beach. And Lieutenant Mauser gets the Hot Guy Award <laughs> uh, for coming out the shower with his epoxied hair. Ripped. Dude's 50 years old at this point, too, when yeah. he makes this movie. So I could hear Madela's breathing get deeper while we watched that on the watch party. Oh, he, interesting. He, Whoa, he, shots uh, fired. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, on mute. But, <laughs> you couldn't hear me. <laughs> uh, you were breathing so heavily it came through the mute. <laughs> it popped up and was like, are you talking? <laughs> <laughs> Unmute. <laughs> uh, but ultimately, because I literally watched this uh, this morning like 10 hours ago, and either I was way too tired or actually liked the movie. Still not sure which one, but I laughed my ass off at times, and it happened often. This felt like a TV show that just kept coming with all these solid situational comedy moments. It replaced all the crude humor of the first with silliness that just made me giggle like Madela when he finally watched the movie that everyone else in the world has seen multiple times. Times. I feel like this, he's firing lots of shots at you. He loves me. I feel this is obviously not a good movie, so I give it a five out of ten. This, this dude did this on purpose. He knows I hate the out of ten feel. <laughs> uh, a bad movie that rules from Aaron Nowak, ultimately, though. So good hey, take there from Aaron. So hey, a couple yeah. of uh, bad movies, three bad movies, and a couple of bad movies that rules. We head over to the mayor. What you got for me? But the floor is yours. The floor is mine. Look. And we, we have sequels that are better than the originals, right? Yeah. We have sequels that are uh, serviceable, right? You're, they're enjoyable. Nowhere near as good as the original, but they're enjoyable. Yeah. And then you have sequels that are the hot dog water of Tom Selleck's kid in Runaway. That's where this <laughs> falls. This we thing can't was, keep giving them hot dogs. We can't keep giving them hot dogs. And I, I got to send a squall it out to, uh, to, to Ducky to Boys. Duck. So, yeah. Oh, okay. um, sorry to, dis- but, sorry yeah, to disrail you there. Go ahead. Yeah, we're derailed. Um, yeah, this thing was about as fun to watch as getting a concussion. <laughs> <laughs> I was bored. I told you yesterday, you, you know, I was bored watching this thing. Doesn't there it rank couple, on the dog poop scale? It's oh, a the dog poop scale is coming. <laughs> Tua Tug of Viola would love this movie right now if you watched it. Right, <laughs> he might. Yeah, he, Tua would love it. He 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 might retire and just watch Police Academy two the whole you. time. Um, yeah, just boring. There's just so much that they could have done that they didn't. The nostalgia factor was there because, like you, I loved watching Police Academy movies. I think yeah. I gave the first one when we did a good movie. It's yeah. legit a good movie. Enjoyed it. All the kind of sight gags and everything in that movie. None of that here where there's opportunity. I mean, this one is like. Your dog alerts you at 3 a.m. to get up, to let him outside, right? But the dog, it's snowing, it's cold, the dog doesn't want to go out, so it just shits in the doorway there. You're groggy getting up, getting your coffee in the morning, and you step in it. <laughs> And track it all over the house because you're so groggy. You had to get up for this dog. It's That's just what a, this movie is like. It's just a bad movie. Yeah, it's wow. terrible. <laughs> it's so specific. I, who hurt you? <laughs> I think you used that rating on show, rubber. Uh, show yeah. me on the doll. <laughs> this movie hurt you. <laughs> um, all right. Last patron says uh, Tim. Tim goes. Uh, like I was 13, first time I saw this, and I loved it then. Watched it every couple of decades, and I haven't seen it in quite a few years. So watching it now, there's some things that haven't aged well. However, however, I still enjoyed it, and I would give this a bad movie that rules so most of the patrons going bad movie that rules this table we don't know mel yet uh, mostly going bad movie uh we'll throw it over to the kids table you have the the floor over there brian what's your final thoughts uh i don't need to belabor i think a lot of great points have been made yeah. uh, i went into the movie and i remember watching them when i was young and loving uh it as a franchise mm-hmm. and so watching the first scene where it's really ridiculous with him locking up the shop, I was yeah. like, oh, that's right. This is mm-hmm. why I love this yeah. because this is mm-hmm. really fun. And it sort of just falls flat because none of the characters get to be themselves and show off. And right. uh, the comedy is lackluster. And um, it's a bad movie that should have been a TV show yes. instead of a movie. Because yeah. there, there could be some comedy that happens and that you could appreciate some of the pranks that happen if it was in a 30-minute for, format. Yeah. Uh, you know, I hear you, brother. Yeah. So bad movie that rules or just bad movie bad movie straight up all right david so the 80s were weird right (laughs) um there was a lot of cocaine flying around during the 80s and this movie shows it all over the place it the cuts in it are ridiculous Mm -hmm. the movie is just it's disjointed and it's real bad yeah but i think the worst thing is that this was huge police academy was huge they had toys cartoons seven freaking movies of this thing. There's no reason that it should be such uh, 
fever dream. And <laughs> it, it's an SNL skit that yeah. went off the rails and they yeah. just said keep pumping it in just yeah. let's keep let's just keep keep it this course <laughs> until it has no more money left in it and that's what they did this movie sucks and it's a bad movie that sucks <laughs> if that's a thing this is a sucky yeah, movie a that thing. sucks it's a thing it's, it's bad real bad <laughs> How do you really feel? Crystal clear. I love it. Um, Got it. So with uh, that table being set as it is, we finally uh, go to Mel. Well, then. <laughs> Having grown up with the entire Police Academy series, mm. including the Police Academy, the animated series. Yeah. Um, so I absolutely love the Police Academy series. Mm. Um, this is the worst of all of them and it is a straight up bad movie Whoa. i did not expect that at all dude i i watched this before the assignments came out i it, it was on so yeah. i'm like oh crap police academy 2 is on i i yeah i actually sat down and watched it and i'm like huh and then uh, i watched it again yesterday just to to prepare for today and i yeah. went huh mm. and this is the only like the the mission Moscow yeah. isn't this yeah. bad. Wow. The, the, oh, uh, going to Miami, not this bad. Uh, uh, Citizens on patrol and yeah. uh, uh, back in training. Yeah. It's sad that I know all of these. Yeah, no, it's fine. Um, this 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 is a bad movie, and yeah. I, I feel bad saying that. Yeah. Um, because it it feels like I uh, like I, I messed up. Like you're betraying a friend. Yeah. Like right. like I fell short here. Yeah. Um, by by not uh, enjoying it well, as I used to. It's not your fault. It is. <laughs> no, it's the. It's not your fault. It's the crap writing Mel, and the Mel. crap direction and the. It's not your fault. But there was boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Even so, though if Lauren didn't enjoy them, there still were boobs in here. There, subpar. Yes, according to Lauren. I go to Lauren. To Lauren. I'm not, I don't judge. I'm an equal opportunity. <laughs> Squeezer. <A> Squeezer. <laughs> hey, thank you. Uh, that's kind of rapey. Uh, <laughs> That's getting cut. That's getting cut. <laughs> but uh, I didn't mean non-consensually. Right. right. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. <laughs> Here, can you put my uh, badge I mean, on? Right. I want to squeeze him. <laughs> yeah, box those things like Sugar Ray Leonard. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you, Mel, for your honesty, and I appreciate it. And thank you guys all uh, for being here and for doing this. And I do want to give a quick shout out to Brian's. Brian Draws Movies is where you can find Brian's stuff on Instagram, right? It's just at Brian Draws Movies. Yep. That's your main feed. Yep, perfect. And I have a website, BrianDrawsMovies.com. Perfect. So you can check uh, check them out, check out my stuff there. So those and you've of you, got awesome merch. Yes, all those yeah. of you who have been listening for a while probably know that we shouted out Brian, gosh, probably over a year ago at this point, and we've had a couple of his uh, mugs on our table. We had our Three Amigos mug out there for a long time. Dude does awesome work, and so if you want some uh, a print or a mug or something, with just like he has a knack for picking the just the best images from these movies that you all love, and uh, you know, just like we got the Tommy Boy one out here in the shop. The Tommy want wingy part. Part is perfect. <laughs> uh, so definitely check out BrianDrawsMovies.com or his Instagram. Uh, and David is a person that does things too. Yep, I bought his mugs before. <laughs> he's a buyer. I bought a few of them, and they're very nice. That's awesome. why he's here because awesome. he bought Brian's mugs. So right. we right. just threw him in then, since he bought Brian's mugs. So we're happy to have you guys here. I mean, I've known David not really well, but for a little while from us talking through, you know, about the merch and stuff. But um, I, I met David recently because That's he, Brian. Still, uh, did I say David? You did. You I'm sorry. I met Brian. <laughs> Brian and David. Uh, I met David recently. He actually hooked us up with some stuff for the shop, for the Forge. So um, nice. excited to have you guys here and, and be part of this. And hey, man, for your first times, you guys crushed this, knocked yeah. this out of the park. So uh, welcome to come back any time at all. And so before we head out, though, we have to wake up our resident AI to uh, to find out what we're going to be doing next month. So hold on to your butts, as they say, because we're going to wake up DH9K here. Uh, she is not. She's been crabby not lately. Not liked on the Discord. No, they no. don't like her at all. DH9K, are you them. here? Hello, my name is DH9K, and I am ready for query. I'm chipper today. A little bit. Uh, what are we doing next week? 
Next week you will be watching Resident Evil Apocalypse because it's time for spooky season. Oh, that's right. We're starting off our October episodes. And so Resident Evil Apocalypse will be our episode next week. We talked about the first one last October, I think we did that. So Bob and both of the Ferrells, Ryan and Stephanie, will be here for Resident Evil Apocalypse as we dive back into the Mila Jovovich's uh, Resident Evil franchise that's been much maligned. Uh, people love it or hate it. Are you guys big fans of the Resident Evil movies? You ever seen them? You I'm like sure I've seen Apocalypse. Okay, I, that's I, the second I, one. Yeah, yeah. I know I saw the first one, and I, I do like them. Yeah, yeah. I that, I only They're ever fine. saw the first one, so from here on out, I've never seen any of them. So I'll be experiencing them all for the first time. But that should like be a good it's time. Just one big movie. Yeah. In my head, there there's not. Like, How do you separate them out, right? Separate ones. It's just. It's like a season of television, wait, right? Yeah. 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 No, I hear you. Uh, DH9K, did you like the movie? Did you like Police Academy too? The only way this movie would have been worse is if you were in it. Oh, oh thanks. Well, okay, there it is. I'm just glad you asked that question. I'm <laughs> there it is. DH9K, do you like the Resident Evil movies? Yes. Because there's a oh. rogue AI in the first one. Uh, that doesn't take everything makes sense. Else. I wonder, hmm. would James, the police captain, oh. be a better Mauser? Well, from, from Mummer Man? Do you think that would have worked out, DH9K? No. Oh, no, oh. that's right. Well, she doesn't you, like anything that I do. DH9K, are you going to take out Stephanie next week? I can taste your tears, and they power my servos. Oh, oh, oh. Talk about lubrication. Oh, oh. All right. right. All right. Well, I guess uh, stuff, where, watch out. Time to go back to sleep. Yes. <laughs> okay. okay. Good night. Uh, thank you guys all for being here. Thanks, Mel Vandy, for closing the shoe store a little early to get out here. Appreciate you, man. And um, I'm, I'm shocked that you didn't like Police Academy 2, but there's always Police Academy 3, which, you know, Tell you what, probably Police be a Academy 3, do. good movie. I'm just going to throw okay. it out there. All right. Well, we'll see. They got to go back in training because two was so bad. They're like, yes, get these yeah. guys back. In yeah, that's why they had to. So, and thank you, Dr. Madela, for being here as well. Of course. We appreciate torturing you with Police Academy movies <laughs> whenever possible. And the mayor, <laughs> and to Brian and David, thank you guys for joining us. My name's James Hauser. I'm your host, and we will catch you guys on the next one. Police Academy 2 sucks. <laughs> I lost it. I lost it. I had it and I lost it. They neutered yeah. high tower. Uh, I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> Bear trap. Electric razor wire. <laughs> oh, I had something for the earlier part, but it uh, doesn't Sorry. work with this rhythm. You just gotta jam it in there. Yeah. Where is it? Jam it in like they did with jokes at every turn in this one. Oh, I thought you were gonna say like Tackleberry did. Yeah. Hanging out at the zoo is much like camp. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put a button on that. All I know is I love lamps. <laughs>